Waco, Texas, where they are ready to rock and uh, rather Lawrence, uh, Kansas, my bad, ready to rock and roll. Baylor and Kansas coming your way. Clay Matvick and Matt Stinchcomb have the call. Enjoy. All right, Dari, the freight train that is the Baylor Bears rolling into Memorial Stadium here in Lawrence, Kansas. Number eight in the BCS standings and going for a program best. 11th straight win tonight. They're going to face the two and four Kansas Jayhawks looking for their first Big 12 win in almost three years. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Lawrence. Alongside my partner, Matt Stinchcomb, I'm Clay Matvick. Don Davenport will be with us in just a bit. Art Bryles has turned this Baylor program around and say what you want about their strength of schedule. They're still 6-0, Stinch. Number eight in the BCS, and they're putting up crazy numbers with an offense that he created when he was a high school head coach back in the 90s. Yeah, it's a much improved defense for Baylor, but their signature is the offense, and it's a prolific one. The numbers are staggering. They run at a fast pace. They're balanced but they're also flexible. Almost all of their plays have a built-in option, run or pass, that can always make a defense wrong. And so when you try to defend a one-back offense with only five in the box, they have five blockers. Bryce Petty assesses the sixth defender. Can he get there in time? Last week versus Iowa State, they're incapable of stopping the run. Shock Linwood gets into the end zone for a touchdown. The same works. In the passing game, if you try to cheat the seventh man in the box, the safety coming down to be the seventh man to give him a numbers advantage, but your man coverage outside versus Antoine Goodley, one of the most talented and speedy receivers, as you'll see in college football. And Bryce Petty can throw strikes in the passing offense. They can always make a defense wrong, no matter where they're trying to help. Is it in the passing game? Is it in the running game? And because of Bryce Petty's decision making, they've been very effective so far this season. Charlie Weiss in Kansas is going to have its hands full here tonight, but they may have gotten some good news just moments ago. For more on that, let's go down to Don. Yeah, this should help. Kansas gets back their leading receiver, Tony Pearson, after missing two weeks with a head injury. He will start here tonight. Head coach Charlie Weiss calling him their main speed threat on that side of the ball. Yep, their leading receiver. And Kansas just 16 passing yards last week against Oklahoma. So getting this guy back, certainly should help. Well, they want to run the football. Kansas has been pretty good at running the football, but if you're one-dimensional, Coach Weiss will tell you this, it's very difficult to allow a defense to key on any one phase of your offense. They absolutely have to have more of a threat in their passing attack. Trevor Pardula has it on the tee, ready to go. Levi Norwood back deep to return for Baylor. Into the end zone, and it's Corey Coleman makes the catch. And he'll take a knee. Kansas won the toss. They elected to defer. And we're going to see this Baylor offense right away. Bryce Petty, the nation's most efficient passer, completing 71% of his throws. Over 2,000 yards, 15 touchdowns, just one pick in the first six games. And you look at what Bryce Petty has been able to do. Even the coaching staff at Baylor said they didn't really know what they had in him. He's not as mobile as the previous two quarterbacks, Robert Griffin III and Nick Florence. And yet he has been very effective as a signal caller for the Baylor Bears. We touched on it. It's not arm strength. It's not just decision making. They also have to be fearless at the quarterback position to run our Browns offense. Lake Seastrunk. Junior running back goes in motion on first down, thrown and incomplete. Tevin Reese is averaging 119 yards per game, second in the Big 12, only to Anquan Goodley. Can't make the catch, second down. That time, Petty just a little bit off the mark, throwing behind Reese. Play fake, Petty throws, hoists it up the sideline, some contact, no penalty flag intended for Corey Coleman. But he was covered up the sideline by Ja'Cory Shepard, the converted wide receiver at corner. And you see, this is the types of matchups they want off a of play action. You see Shepard, a little bit of contact there, some hand fighting. The refs no call, good no call in that regard. Nice coverage by Shepard. I'm going to check the play on third down and ten. You can see Kansas was showing a pressure look. Baylor checks to a different play. High snap, Petty recovers. Deep downfield. Incomplete intended for Goodland. And it's only the sixth 
three and out all season for this Baylor offense. We've seen Baylor, they've done an excellent job, as you just noted. They don't go on the field and then hop right back off of the football field, but two throws that were a little bit off the mark by Bryce Petty here in the opening series. Mrs. Reese behind him. Kansas wanted to start hot in this ball game. They've done a good job so far this season to denying scores. No first drive points this year allowed by the Kansas defense. And on to punt, Spencer Roth, maybe the most inconspicuous player in college football. That's only his 16th punt on the season. Connor Embry with a fair catch, and Kansas has it at their own 34-yard line. All right, here comes Jake Heaps, junior quarterback, transfer from BYU, has struggled, but the entire offense has struggled. Now he does have the hybrid running back wide receiver Tony Pearson at his disposal tonight. Tony Pearson is a guy that can threaten you with the deep ball. As much as they've run the football so far this season, play action could mean something. And they do play fake. Heaps has time to throw. Going deep for Pearson. Incomplete. Double coverage, and he overthrew him. Dimitri Goodson, Terrell Burt running side by side with Pearson. Well, you could see early on in the ball game, Kansas came out in their diamond formation, a formation they had a lot of success running the football out of versus Oklahoma last week. Baylor's very aggressive, but Tony Pearson already figuring targeted in the first play of the ball game. The passing game dropped from 195 yards per game to 84 the last two weeks without him. Now here's James Sims, his first touch of the game. Give him two. It's going to bring up third down and long, and Lee Jean's impact players, James Sims and Pearson for Kansas, Hager and Dixon defensively for Baylor. Well, Ahmad Dixon at his safety position, because Baylor plays so close to the line of scrimmage with their safeties, they don't play anybody deep, rarely if they ever do. They play even cover four across the board, and you can see that Ahmad Dixon has figured prominently in their run support. A lot of third and longs this year for this Kansas offense. Just 27 percent on third down this season and it's incomplete here intended for Pearson a flag comes in from the secondary Rick Lumiere our official is in charge of this Big 12 crew tonight holding number 25 of the defense the penalty will be 10 yards from the previous spot. First down. A break for the Jayhawks offense. It's Sam Hall, the nickelback, third-year starter. Moved to nickel from safety this spring. He's called for the penalty. <laughs> Sam Hall, as you mentioned, he spends a lot of time. He plays in the box. You know, a little hand check in there. I get the impression you don't agree with the call. <laughs> that, was a, that was a little aggressive on the flag. Play fake, Heaps rolling out to his right, dumps it off, and it's incomplete. A short pass intended for the tight end crossing over Mundine. Let's bring up second down and 10. Jemay Mundine, touchdown catch in each of the last four games. Heaps was just running for his life there, trying to dump it off short. It was Mundine who was being covered by Sam Hall in the previous a pass interference call. He's a target that when Pearson is not available, he has had to step up in the passing game. One that, as you've noted, has been very anemic so far this season for the Jayhawks. They try to throw again. Heaps. And another incompletion. And this is exactly what happened for the Kansas offense last week. They went 5 of 13, only 16 passing yards against Oklahoma. Charlie Weiss said, I don't care if you're playing the 85 Bears. 16 passing yards in a college football game is unacceptable. Uh, and that's what's hamstrung them quite a bit. You know, last week, Oklahoma, they came out, they ran the football with authority. They are able to jump out on the Sooners. Well, here tonight, you can see a concerted effort, back-to-back -back first downs. Throwing the football off play action, trying to loosen up the Bears. Throwing for it here on third and ten. Heaps in trouble. Spins away from the defender and now just throws to get away from it. We're hearing some boo birds from this Kansas crowd at Memorial Stadium. Chris McAllister with all the pressure on Heaps. And there's a flag down. 
Yeah, he didn't leave the pocket. There was nobody. He heaved that ball so far downfield, there was no receiver. Intentional grounding, number nine of the offense. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul with a loss of down. Be fourth down. And this is probably why we're going to see Montel Cozart, the true freshman quarterback that Charlie Weiss is excited about. Pulled the red shirt off of him last week, and he's got a package of plays for this game. The punter, Trevor Pardula, is on. Levi Norwood back to return. He had a 52-yard punt return touchdown last week against Iowa State. Runs up, fields it at the 25, and he's across the 30, down at the 31. Well, Baylor rarely goes three and out. They did on their opening possession. Possession number two here in Lawrence is coming up as Bryce Petty. And this high-octane offense is ready to go to work again. No score here first quarter in Kansas. Welcome back to ESPNU College Football Primetime, presented by Five Hour Energy. Baylor 6-0, 3-0 in the Big 12. Ready to go to work for the second time on offense after a three and out. They got bowl eligible last week for the fourth year in a row. And once in Waco, that was cause for celebration. Now it's an afterthought. It's become expected as on first down. Teddy hands off to Seastrunk for three. Second down. Nice Petty. First year starter waited his turn behind RG3. And Nick Florence. Hands off again to Seastrunk, looking to cut the corner wide. Well defended by Kansas. A gain of two is, is cut down by Cassius Sendish, the free safety, the Juco transfer. Victor Simmons was in on that play as well, the nickel back. He'll be the guy that's in the slot defender. Oftentimes the one that might determine how many are in the box versus this Baylor offense. Right now you can see six defenders in the box versus a one-back set. That means Baylor's outnumbered if they're looking to run. You see Penny checking. Third down and six to the outside complete. First down catch for Clay Fuller, the junior out of Belverde, Texas. So we take a look at our Lee Jeans Impact players. Well, Tevin Reese was targeted on the first play of the game. Lake C, Lake C struck is a key component to a 62% run-to-pass offense of Baylor. He's going to be stopped for no gain as Sendish, one of eight new starters for this KU defense. This season makes the tackle as we go back to those impact players. Love and Simmons for KU. Simmons is the nickel back. He is going to have to play well here tonight. C struck. Minimal gain, and now it's third down at about seven. And when we were talking with Clint Bowen, the defensive coordinator, Simmons is a guy that he focused on during our conversation. Well, Victor Simmons, he's the guy that's going to be split between he's either going to look like he's playing the run or he's going to run out in pass coverage in the slot. But oftentimes, he'll be the fifth or sixth, rather, defender in the box. And he's the guy that has to make the right decision. This time, lined up at the top of your screen right here. Third and seven. Man wide open, but Glasgow Martin can't bring it in. The big back from Round Rock, Texas. Back to back. Three and outs. We see Victor Robbins, we just hit on him. He bails out, and Glasgow Martin is all by himself. Look at all this. There's not a defender anywhere close to him. That's a sure first down. And a lot of times, when you're a receiver, Martin's a pretty good one. You see all that green grass in front of him, you start running with the football before you make the reception. This is only the second road game for Baylor. Kansas State gave him a rub when Baylor went to Manhattan. And a rough start so far for these Baylor Bears here in Lawrence. Fair caught at the 15-yard line by Embry. Let's we'll see which Kansas quarterback comes out to start this series. Will it be the junior Jake Heaps or the true freshman Montel Cozart? 
Looks like Heaps. This Kansas offense looking for something from their junior quarterback, Jake Heaps. Last drive was ugly. Came into the game completing right at 50% of his passes. You know, they've targeted Jermaine Mundine twice. They tried to get the ball to Tony Pearson as he's returned from injury, but pressure and really off target passing so far, Heaps has not been able to settle down as a thrower in this ball game. I think Kansas is going to look to establish their ground game with this possession. And they do run on first down. It's James Sims, who went over 3,000 career rushing yards last week against Oklahoma. 23 carries for 129 and a couple of touchdowns last week. If they can get him going, that'll certainly take some of the pressure off whoever's playing quarterback. Well, you know, in that first series, you could see Kansas comfortable you know, throwing the ball around, sending a message perhaps to Baylor's defense, which has loosened up zero. They've still got all 11 defenders within seven yards of the line of scrimmage. It's going to be difficult to run against that defense. They shoot it out to Rodriguez Coleman, and that basically, in a nutshell, is how the Kansas receivers have played this year. The true wide receivers on this team, Coleman, Parmalee, Ford, and McKay, have been very ineffective a lot of drives. You look at the past two ball games, the receiving core has accumulated two total receptions for 60 yards. Makes it all the more difficult to get a passing game going. You've got a quarterback who's having difficulty. And obviously, receivers will drop passes that are catchable. Five passes for Heaps, all incomplete so far. Third and seven. Play fake. Heaps sets up and throws. Pearson can't come up with it. Well, they had the matchup that they wanted. Well, Pearson. He's covered man-to-man, -man, and he is their fastest player on the field. You can see him drive, step on the defender's toes, Burt, and then he breaks to the sideline. There's green grass there, but that's that might be the rust of having missed two ball games. But Heaps, who's been off target, placed it right there where he needed to, and you can see him there. He's going to catch over ball to his receiver. Pardula. Backing off Levi Norwood, makes the catch at the 30. He comes straight up the middle of the field. Penalty flag falls down behind him as he gets to the 45-yard line. We'll check on the flag after this. Check in the studio with Matt. Thanks, Clay. Time for your Dr. Pepper 10 conference update. We head to Norman. Undefeated Texas Tech was trailing at one point by 14. Then they recover an onside kick, and Davis Webb to Jakeem Grant. Touchdown. Texas Tech leads 24-21 in Norman. Penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. All right, thank you, Matt. Uh, Texas Tech coming into the weekend undefeated. And, of course, Baylor still has to play Texas Tech. The toughest part of Baylor's schedule still in front of them. As that penalty was against Baylor on the return, they'll mark it back inside the 25-yard line. Here are the Big 12 standings coming into the weekend. Yeah, and, and you talk about Texas Tech and Baylor and how they've built those records. Texas Tech 7-0 overall. Really their first big test of the season versus Oklahoma. Baylor has yet to really been tested other than Kansas State two weeks ago. Blake Seastrup on first down. To the 30-yard line, good run on first down for Seastrunk. The Oregon transfer leads the Big 12 with 127 yards rushing per game and 10 touchdowns. He was held to 59 a couple of weeks ago at Kansas State, but he bounced back last week against Iowa State. We get the carry here again, but for a minimal game. So third down again coming up for these Bears. It'll be third and we'll call it three. You can see Clint Bowen. He's allowing his safeties to get a little nosy. They're getting closer to the line of scrimmage. Done a good job in run support on the past two downs. Isaiah Johnson as he spun down into the box. Glasgow Martin first down. He had a season-high 21 carries last week for 81 yards against Iowa State in that 71-7 to victory in Waco. He gets six there. He's excellent on third down. As physical as Lake Seastrunk is, Martin has more girth. Petty wants to throw it again. 
There's the big play for Tevin Reese. All the way to the end zone touchdown. 62 yards on that touchdown catch for Tevin Reese. Took a little while, but this Baylor offense wasn't going to be denied for too long, you didn't think. And they're on the board. We touched on it and how dangerous this team can be. A couple of runs. You get another opportunity with a run formation, or at least a run formation for Baylor. And they go in a heavy set, and they go play action, and that's where this offense is the most lethal. Aaron Jones with his 156th straight made PAT, which leads the nation. Very quick. It's what Baylor does. Four plays, 76 yards, in just a minute and eight seconds. You see, Reese is right here. And we mentioned Victor Simmons before, and he has to play a big game. They've got a heavy run formation. You see Simmons looking in the backfield off the play action, and that allows Reese to get right underneath. Otherwise, if he's got his eyes on the receiver and sees Reese threatening him, he's right there on top of that pass. But he lacked the eye discipline. He saw the play fake, bit on it just enough, and that allowed Reese to get underneath coverage and get all the way to the house. And that is what we're talking about with this Baylor offense, Clay. We don't run the football, but ultimately, this is a passing offense. Yeah, it's balanced. 414 yards passing per game, 300 rushing per game, but it's 60-40 run to pass. And a lot of that comes when they get into the red zone, and it's because of the leads that this Baylor offense accumulates. Otherwise, you know, in the first half, they're about 50-50. And they do an excellent job of staying balanced when the game's still in contention. Just saw that graphic. I mean, big plays is what these Baylor Bears do. Ja'Cory Shepard on the return, lost it, and the Jayhawks able to recover. Shepard recovered his own fumble, brings it back 21 yards. With 9-10 to go here in the first quarter, Kansas has it at their own 25. I'll tell you what, this is the advantage of playing on an artificial surface. You think you get a bounce like this on grass? Great job by Shepard, good. Good concentration, lousy ball security, but able to maintain that possession for his offense. New quarterback, Montel Cozart. Charlie Weiss took his red shirt off last week. Nine snaps over two drives against Oklahoma. No passes, trying to break him in slower. Now he's going to try and complete his first collegiate pass, but just like Jake Heaps, way off target, not a bounce. Second down. Lackey and Hager in pursuit in the backfield. And you can see on you know, these rollout passes, it cuts the defense in half effectively and allows a quarterback to work with half of the football field. You got multiple options to get it downfield. Coach Weiss mentioned that he feels like Cozart's not just a running threat. He wants to make sure that he establishes him as, as a passer in this ballgame. Certainly the more athletic of the two quarterbacks throws. There is his first college completion to Jermaine Mundine, the tight end. It's a pickup of six, so third down and four as K.J. Morton made the tackle. Number four, Ohio State. Ready to take the field against Penn State in the Big Ten, 8 Eastern on ABC. Well, a dimension that Cozart brings in a scenario like this when it's third and four is the run-pass opportunity we've seen Kansas move the pocket on the previous two pass attempts. Kozar rolling to his left, throws incomplete. Parmalee, the intended receiver, Dimitri Goodson, the former point guard at Gonzaga, on the coverage, and the punt unit comes out again for the Jayhawks. See Kansas willing to mix it up if they absolutely have to, but so far in this game, incapable of establishing the run. A lot of that is because Baylor has got eight and nine defenders practically in the tackle box. It's going to be a challenge to run against anybody with those type of numbers. Pardula, good punt. Norwood fields it inside the 20. Cuts it back to the sideline and finds a lot of running room to the 40 and the 45 where he's knocked out of bounds, but a flag down at the 25-yard line.
Return of 28, but we'll see what the flags are about. There's two flags down at the 25. During the return, illegal block in the back, and the 28 of the receiving team. Penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. There's time out on the field. Baylor will have it at their own 11 when we come back. 7-0 Bears. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by New Raspberry 5-Hour Energy. Available for a limited time. Get yours now. And in part by the Discover It card. It's a game changer. In the fourth play. All right. Thanks, Matt. Keep us updated. Baylor, three straight games against ranked opponents. They host Oklahoma. Then they play Texas Tech in Arlington, and then they're at Oklahoma State. Quite a gauntlet coming up for these Bears. Blake Seastrunk on first down right up the middle. Now close to the 30-yard line. He has nine 100-yard games in the last 10. Give him 12 yards on that play. He's so effective whenever he gets his touches, too. Almost a first down for each carry for Lake Seastrunk. Now Petty wants to throw again. Coming back to the football. It's Antoine Goodley. Tackled out across the 40 at the 41. Another 13-yard pickup. They'll move the chains right away again. You see, Kansas did such a good job on the early offensive possessions by Baylor. You see things starting to loosen up. They need to make sure they tackle well in space for throws like that one. Petty all day to throw. Good one. Caught. To the 29-yard line. Third in the nation, 142 receiving yards per game. That's a 40-yard reception matched up with the safety and this is one of the things that Baylor does so well they get the matchups that they want if you match up with the safety in space it's advantage Baylor Blake Seastruck is loose goodbye touchdown a 29 yard touchdown gallop for Seastruck and Baylor which had to punt in fact they went three and out on their first two possessions now they're back to what they're known for doing, scoring and scoring quickly. And that time, Kansas, I think, got caught by the pace more than anything else. Baylor had 11 personnel, a tight end in the game as well. They just ran a power scheme. Seastrunk demonstrating his patience. He's got excellent balance and clearly breakaway speed. Baylor showing so far in this ball game, just in this drive alone, the big play in the passing game, and then being able to get it done from outside the red zone on the ground with Lake Seastrunk, their big hitting running back, and it's 14 to nothing. Lake Seastrunk with his 11th touchdown of the year to make it 14 to nothing. Their average scoring drive coming into tonight, a minute and 46 seconds. Skewed up a little bit after last week when one of their drives took seven minutes and 11 seconds against Iowa State. The last two here, very fast. A minute and eight seconds, and that one that Seastrunk scored on, just 51 seconds. That's the challenge, is that you know you have to keep this offense in front of you, and yet at the same time, because of their willingness to run, they'll come and beg you to come up close. Very short kick for Aaron Jones. I almost wonder if they're trying to steal a possession with that kick. But going back to the run, you'll see Kansas isn't aligned. You see right now, they're having difficulty getting lined up at the linebacker position. And then they just overscrape. Watch Seastrunk stop. And they do an excellent job of seeing the cutback lane on a power. But that play was almost dead in the water for Kansas defensively because of their alignment. They had two second-level players on the wrong side of the formation. James Sims gets six on first down out to the 45-yard line. Ahmad Dixon, the safety for Baylor, made the tackle. One of the first big national recruits for Bryles back in 2009, Ahmad Dixon. I got banged up on that last play. Yeah, 
I think when he came up in that run support, he took a shot. About a suplex to shoulder, a little stinger. Flags everywhere. There is no play prior to the snap. False start. Number 61 of the offense. Five-yard penalty and it's still second down. Left tackle Pat Lewandowski. That's the first penalty against Kansas today. And Lewandowski started the season at center. That's a position that Coach Weiss mentioned they needed to solidify. As you see Dixon trying to work out that shoulder. As soon as they get a positive yardage play, a nice yep. play on first down, and then they back right back up. Yep, now the ball spotted back at the Kansas 40. Montel Cozart running the offense, hands off to Sims. Nothing doing. Byron Bonds, the defensive tackle, playing a lot as a true freshman this year. Very active on the defensive front last week in the game against Iowa State. Makes the tackle there. So now third and long again for the Jayhawks. Well, now you wonder why when we were talking about coming into this game, why Kansas wanted to throw and we need to open this thing up. It's because ultimately they want to run the football. They want to try to loosen Baylor up and respect the pass. They have given them no reason to do so. And it's going to throw, they're going to try to run right into the teeth of this defense. They're 0 for 3 on third down. Cozart, deep pass incomplete. Rodriguez Coleman, the intended receiver. Terrell Burt on the coverage. And this offense has amounted six yards of total offense on four drives tonight. Just keep in mind that five of those six yards were negated by a false start. I mean, that was six yards from that first run by Sims, and then they just go right backwards. And they can't afford the way this offense is operating tonight so far to have any penalties. Fourth punt already for Pardula. Another good one. 15, it's Norwood. Going the wrong way. He stopped at the 18-yard line. Later tonight on ESPNU, two teams out of the SWAC go head-to-head. -head. Intrastate rivalry. Alabama AM taking on Alabama State. ESPNU's college football tonight at 10:30 on the U. Also live on Watch ESPN. National news and notes: big win for the Golden Gophers. Even though their head coach Jerry Kill is dealing with epilepsy, acting head coach Tracy Clays led the Gophers to an upset of number 24 Nebraska. Miami they get a scare in their game against Wake Forest, but number seven moves on. And how about Coach Cut leading Duke to bowl eligibility two years in a row? And Virginia Tech had been on a tear. Excellent defense all season. Special teams letting Beamer down. C struck. Another big play. Boy, he is fun to watch. And that's a run of 24. Right now, Clint Bowen's defense, he needs an incomplete pass or something, because right now, Baylor, this offense is starting to plane out. You see the big plays starting to pile up on this Kansas unit. Play Fuller. And he's going to get eight more out close to midfield. Petty now five of nine, already over 100 yards passing. Complete again to Fuller, lunging out, trying to get that first down, and it's going to be close. Looks like he got it. You see that? That could have been, you know, with an opportunity to make a tackle just shy of the first. Allow this Jayhawk defense to come up for air, but the second effort by Fuller keeps the avalanche sliding towards it. Play action pass, Petty. Coming back to the ball and making the catch, that's Tevin Reese. Makes a catch at about the 38-yard line, about a yard shy of the first down. Petty you know, working the pocket just enough. Reese does a good job of coming back for his quarterback and making the catch, keeping it off the turf. And a play fake. Levi Norwood on the crossing line. The tackling is atrocious tonight for Kansas. They're making contact with the ball carrier, not able to bring him down on first contact. Another 23-yard gain. Right now, Baylor's spinning the ball all over the yard, but it's in the red zone when they go to the run. Petty shrugs his shoulders, now ready to step out of the pocket. 
throws it on the run to the end zone. Incomplete. Jay Lee, the third-year sophomore, was the intended receiver. Shepard you know, the coverage in the red zone. 72% of their drives have resulted in a touchdown, and they're running a lot inside the 20. Almost 90% of the time, they get into this scoring area, 20 yards and in. Baylor's running the football. Right now, here with this defensive set with six in the box, they've got a numbers advantage. They do hand off here. Martin finds a hole and takes it into the end zone from 14 yards out. His 23rd career rushing touchdown. And another fast scoring drive. That one also under their season average. Aaron Jones keeps that streak alive. 158 straight made PATs. It's been a long year for the Kansas Jayhawks. It's been an outstanding year for this offense, the Baylor Bears. On the challenge, you see it. They've got a tight end in the game, and they're just going to run power, pull the guard, and they pick up an extra blocker on the play side. Kansas only has six defenders in the box. They don't get across in time. The support does not come in, and when you see Glasgow does a good job of seeing the backside cut, we saw Lake Seastrunk do this as well. The stiff arm, and he's able to get in the end zone. We mentioned it. As soon as they get an opportunity from a number standpoint, if it's even, if they got the same number of blockers as you'd have defenders, unless they like what they have outside, this Baylor offense is going to run the football. You see it there in the red zone. They're going to run it almost all the time. You think of the Oregon Ducks and how much they run the ball. They don't even run it as much as Baylor does when you get in the 20-yard line and in. Well, last time in the state of Kansas, Baylor had a Tough game with the Wildcats of Kansas State, but so far so good in the Sunflower State tonight. On the return, upended at the 23-yard line is Shepard. 3.52 to go here in the first quarter, all Baylor. Huge matchup out of the Pac-12. Wrapping up a big day in college football today, Kevin Hogan and the Cardinal taking on Oregon State. College football finale presented by Windows, number six Stanford, number 25, Oregon State. Oregon State rolling since that season opening loss to FCS Eastern Washington. And Stanford, the highest ranked one loss team in the country. Let's see if this Kansas offense can get something going on the ground. There's a good run for James Sims. Nine yard pickup. That's impressive considering the fact that Ahmad Dixon is almost like the fourth linebacker in the box. Baylor, they're loaded up versus this run. They feel confident they can handle the defense for any passing threat that Kansas has been able to pose. Cozart gives it to Sims, and he's got a first down Jayhawks, and kind of a sarcastic cheer here from the crowd at Memorial Stadium. I don't know, I think they mean it. I mean, when you see this offense so far this game, but they, I think they are genuinely thrilled to see this offense pick up a first down for something other uh, than a penalty. We saw defensive holding in the opening series. Otherwise, it's been pretty stark and sparse for this Jayhawk offense. That's why you're a Southern gentleman. I'm <laughs> just cynical. Cozart on the keeper. He gets a good run on first down. It's a gain of five. And Baylor has been loading the box defensively. Now they got a man down here. It's Terrell Burt, who's safety. Sophomore out of Wiley, Texas. He's down and being attended to. But this Kansas offense has struggled all season long against whomever they've been playing. 288 yards per game, last in the Big 12. And they rank 120th out of 125 NCAA teams in the FBS. And just 22 total yards tonight as Burt is now to his feet. 
You see Burt come into the screen, kind of ducks his head. Does a good job making the tackle, of course. As he come in for Cozart. Cozart obviously showing that run element that Jay Keeps does not present. See Burt, it looked like he just got bit backwards a little bit by Cozart's knees and that momentum coming into him. You see his low back and kind of hyperextended. Bad snap on second and five. Cozart has to duck for cover. That's a loss of one. Byron Bonds is going to be credited with the tackle as Kansas continues to hurt itself at times. Well, Gavin Howard is a guy that they've liked at center because of the consistency, but yeah, that might be the most athletic play we've seen by this Kansas offense. Cozart, that's the most important reception of every play is the snap, especially when you're out of the shotgun. They've had difficulties with that throughout this season. Howard moved to center three games ago, had never played center before in college. That pass is complete. It's going to be a first down to Parmela. And now the cheering louder here from the Kansas faithful. That's a gain of seven. And they're into plus territory. A couple of first downs now by Kansas. And again, McAllister's able to get pressure. Parmela crossed the entire formation. Dixon's trailing. He just didn't come up in time to deny the yardage needed for the first. And Cozart. Sticking with his receiver across the field. Getting ahead of myself. A few yards shy of midfield. Now they're across the midfield line as Sims carries. That's a gain of seven. So coming up on a minute to go here in the quarter as Kansas, at least offensively now, is starting to show some traction. A power run game. They're running their version of the power now. Traditional, more traditional version by Kansas. But if they could just hit a couple of passes, enough to make Baylor's second-level players respect some of the receivers out wide and even the tight end position. They'll run it again, Sims. He's starting to get lathered up. Another tackle for Dixon, but it's a gain of eight for Sims. Inside the 40. Coach Weiss mentioned to us yesterday, Clay, that maybe the most consistent aspect that they've gotten of their offense has been in their interior offensive line. The last couple of plays, they've had a great deal of success running versus this Baylor defensive front. Smith, Bird, Howard, doing a good job of covering up the defenders. The green line is field goal range, and Kansas is inside field goal range for their kicker, Matthew Wyman. Another nine-yard pickup for James Sims. That might be the last play here of the quarter. Second down and short at the 30-yard line for Kansas. That will do it for the first 15 minutes. All Baylor in the quarter, but Kansas showing signs of life offensively. You look at the Baylor defense, they started out hot, the offense started rolling, but Kansas, they complete a couple of passes, get a couple of first downs, and now the ground game for the Jayhawks, starting to gain momentum versus Baylor's defense up front. Welcome back to College Football Primetime. We're at ESPNU, we're in Lawrence, Kansas. It's 21 to nothing after the first quarter. Baylor on top. It's been a slow offensive night for the Jayhawks. Baylor actually went three and out on its first two possessions, but then, as they want to do, got to scoring. They got to scoring quickly. Although Kansas is in Baylor territory, the true freshman quarterback, Montel Cozart, on second down, was looking downfield, and then he takes a loss of one as Sue Masambuco comes in. Sophomore from Dallas Fort Worth. That's a sack of Cozart. We we're just talking about the solid play that time. Nalo Fusimalo Ohi. He just whiffed right there on the line of scrimmage. Cozart had places to go with the football with his mobility, though, was able to at least get back close to the original line of scrimmage. Tenth play of the drive for Kansas, their longest drive so far tonight. Cozart sprinting out. He's going to option it out to James Sims. And it's going to depend on the spot. Now it looks like he's short. 
K.J. Morton made the tackle. They spotted just shy of the first down marker. So now what's Kansas going to do here? Yeah, they go for it. There's no question you go for it here. And versus Baylor, when you get opportunities, you know, three points is not going to be enough to start chipping away. And we build a mountain of points. Now, keep it in mind, Baylor scored 21 points. Where Kansas started this game, they could slow him down. But absolutely, when it's fourth and a credit card, you take your chances, especially with the success they've had with their power running game this drive. The big fullback, Nick Sizemore, in there in front of Sims. They give it to Sims, and he did not get it. Sam Hall, the senior linebacker, right there at the point of attack. And Baylor's going to take over on downs. This defense under Phil Bennett, third-year defensive coordinator, is much improved over the last couple of seasons. Played excellent. That's Mason Buko. Is really the one that made this play happen. Watch number 93 get penetration upfield and disrupts this football play and allows Hager to scrap over the top. You see him, he just dumps Gavin Howard onto the ground. Sam Hall able to get there and help clean up from the backside. And he went unblocked as well. Poorly executed by Kansas there in the interior portion. Petty going up top on first down has Corey Coleman and he dropped him. Corey Coleman has 4-3 speed, but you got to catch the ball first. Yeah, nobody cares how fast you run without the ball in your hand. Uh, at the end of the day, you just got to be as fast as the guy chasing you, at least faster. And Coleman, that's a sure six points. He's been trailed by Holloman. But once again, the play action allowing a singled-up coverage. Goes to the air again on second and ten through the hands of Tevin Reese. Was a high pass and Victor Simmons was right there well played by the Nickelback so now third and ten for the Baylor offense well, oftentimes with Bryce Benning when he started out this ball game was a little bit loose with his accuracy both of those passes should have been receptions Not a large crowd here in Lawrence, but it is vocal right now. You see Baylor, too, and they froze. And Kansas showing the pressure look. Six defenders. With one second on the play clock, they get it off. Caught by Norwood, first down, and he's still on his feet. And across midfield, Levi Norwood. Third leading receiver for the Bears, the son of assistant coach Brian Norwood. Coach Bowen showed pressure with seven guys coming, but they had man coverage outside on Norwood, and he finds the soft middle of the field. After the 21-yard pickup, now looking for another good play, and they've got it. Jay Lee down at the five-yard line. First down and goal after the 44-yard reception. You see Petty, great touch. These are the throws that Clint Bowen said he wanted to force Baylor to have to make. They're capable of doing it. Petty keeps and walks right in, untouched. Fourth touchdown of the game for this Baylor offense. And it's still early here in the second quarter. Okay, we talked about the flexibility that this offense affords its players. They run a bunch of plays, but there's options. There's options built into all of them. If it's a quarterback keep, is it a give? You know, if it's a run look, you run play action. There's several of those passes off of play action. Baylor hitting on those. Would have been an even quicker drive were it not for a drop on the first pass. That scoring drive, 41 seconds. Their average scoring drive tonight, a minute and two seconds. Petty to Jay Lee to set up the easy touchdown run for the junior quarterback. Bryce Petty with a touchdown run from five yards out to make it 28 to nothing. Last time that Baylor was in Kansas, they trailed Kansas State going into the fourth quarter in Manhattan. They were held to a season low, 451 total yards. 
And just 35 points by their standards, certainly not what we've come to expect this season. But they got a gritty road win, and Art Briles said that was good adversity that time of the year for us. This time in the state of Kansas, much better so far. Already 28 points and 327 total offense as Ja'Cory Shepard gets it across the 20 on the return, out to the 23. Baylor's drives tonight, a couple of three and outs, rare for this team. Yeah, they started slow, Clay. I mean, they really did. You could see them start of kind of, yeah, I don't want to say they're disinterested, but they accumulated momentum. We talked about numbers in the box. Kansas has got six defenders, but watch the two edge players. They're going to commit, and the defensive end's going to crash. And when your quarterback is a runner, you pick up a blocker. Petty diagnoses it, sees the wide open. That's an obvious pull on the zone read to the backside. Cozart stays in a quarterback for Kansas. Darian Miller gets his first touch tonight. And that's going to be just a yard for Miller, who had a career game in 2011 against Baylor. 124 yards and 24 carries and a touchdown. That was a game that Baylor nearly lost. Went to overtime, and the Bears won by a point here in Lawrence. Well, Turner Gill was the head coach. He thought it was he wanted to go for two and just end it in the first overtime and didn't get it. Well, Baylor slept walk through the first quarter, three quarters of that ball game. Cozart, very athletic quarterback. There is no operating room on that far sideline. And it's another one-yard pickup, so third down and eight as Bo Blackshear, the nose tackle, made the tackle for Baylor. This defense, 16 points per game allowed. It's seventh in the NCAA coming into the day. And they had a pseudo shutout last week. Iowa State scored against the Bears' number two defense with 47 seconds left in that football game a week ago. Within their first shutout in Big 12 conference play, that defense had to be disappointed to see that slip away. Third and eight, Cozart looking to throw. Has time to do it, going deep downfield. Has a receiver down there, but again, it's overthrown by quite a few yards. It was Trey Parmalee, the intended receiver. Dimitri Goodson. In the secondary, the cornerback in on the coverage. Goodson, probably the best cover man that Baylor has in their secondary. So if you're going to have a match up with anybody, you see Baylor comfortable with doing that. Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator for Baylor, has done quite a turnaround job with this defensive unit. We talked about how great this offense is, and it is. The difference this season for the Bears has been the defense. Fourth three and out for Kansas. As Levi Norwood out to the 42-yard line. The Kansas quarterbacks, two for 11 tonight passing. Bryce Petty, much better. Art Bryles in his sixth year as head coach at Baylor took over a program on a 12-year losing streak, and now they're the talk of college football. He cut his teeth as a high school coach, much like Hugh Freeze, who's now the head coach at Ole Miss, and Gus Malzahn, who was a high school coaching legend in Arkansas before moving on to college, and now the head coach at Auburn. And Art Bryles won four state titles at Stephenville High School in Texas before turning his attention to the college ranks. What's the common denominator between all those guys? Well, all those coaches use pace, no huddle type offenses very balanced in a lot of ways in what they're trying to do. Auburn is probably the most physical power, power run game. See, Bryles, he made the jump a long time ago to the head coaching post, but Malzahn, his Auburn Tigers, Hugh Freeze and the Rebels, both coming up big victories over LSU and A&M, respectively. That's patted down at the line. The offensive end, Kiba Agostino, a senior out of Katy, Texas, bats it down, second down at 10. Bryles has a lot of continuity on his coaching staff, too. The offensive coordinator, Philip Montgomery, the O-line coach, Randy Clements, they were with him back when he was a high school coach at Stephenville. Bryles, quarterback Petty throws, and it's complete to Clay Fuller out to the 50. That's a gain of eight. So third down and manageable now for Baylor. You know, Baylor, they've got continuity on their coaching staff. What they haven't had is continuity at the quarterback position, really. You know, RG3 was there. They end up transitioning to Nick Florence, and now this year with Bryce Petty. 
That's Glasgow Martin. And he's short. Bring up fourth down. Art Bryles on fourth down this year. Seven for 11. It's tied for first in the Big 12. And he's going to keep that offensive unit out there. I think they probably said, you know, if it's short, we're going to go ahead and run a QB sneak. Petty? I don't know. Doesn't look like he's got it. And Kansas. Gonna get it back on downs. No gain for Petty. Ruling on the field is that the runner was short of the line of game. First down. Skyler Miles, the middle linebacker, and Michael Reynolds combined on the stop. Well, you see, Petty, what you got to do on a QB sneak, you got to give your offensive lineman a chance to get a surge. And you can see there, Desmond Hilliard, number 67, was crashing down. You just got to give him an opportunity. Really looked to me like he should have snuck to the left. But regardless, I think that what they said was, is if we're short on this third down, we'll jump the ball, we'll line up quickly under center, and run a QB sneak. That's back-to-back -back fourth downs where respected defenses have been able to hold. Charlie Weiss going back to his starter, Jake Heaps. This will be his third series. The BYU transfer hands off to Darian Miller. Very little running room. Gain of a couple. Jake Heaps sat out last year after the transfer from BYU. BYU while Dane Christ and Michael Cummings ran the offense. They didn't run it very well, but he had a chance to watch things. Learned a little bit under Charlie Weiss. Named the starter this year, but now Montel Cozart is pressing him for time. Deep handoff to Miller. The 45 of Baylor. Ahmad Dixon, the tackler. Now third and three. Heaps had 16 starts at BYU in 2010 and 11, but then lost his job and decided to transfer here to Kansas. And it hasn't been a storybook, really, uh, experience for Jake Heaps. And the challenge has been for him more than anything was continuity for the, with this offensive front and at the receiver position where the passing game's never really gotten on the rails this year. They're trying to run it. K.J. Morton in the backfield drops the runner for a loss. And it's fourth down. Kansas has converted just one third down tonight. K.J. Morton was cheating in. He was going to shoot from his corner position right away. Unaccounted for in the blocking scheme. Very rarely do you have somebody for that. From the backside, an excellent job getting the runner on the ground to deny the first down yardage needed. Norwood standing at his own 10. Booming punt from Pardula. He's going to land behind him. Can they pin him deep? They do at the two-yard line. Good special teams work by the Kansas Jayhawks. A 44-yard punt for Pardula. And McDonald downs it inside the five. One of the best plays of the night for the Kansas Jayhawks as they're down 28 to nothing with 8.21 to go here before halftime. Somebody go! Lock in, big way, move the bar fast! Explode, explode! Hey, get your feet together, get your chest over the bar, be aggressive. Come on, Rob! Hey, somebody go! Watch these guys' back, they're like, they're locked in the whole time! Don't think so much, Robbie. Championship habits, good job! Kai Scazzotti, the strength coach for the Baylor Bears, one of the many things that has improved under Art Bryles' watch. Took him a couple of years to turn it around now. Baylor lays claim to a Heisman Trophy winner. Four straight bowl teams, a, a number one offense. And they have a new stadium being built, which opens next year, Matt. Yeah, they got great facilities. The coaching staff's in place. We touched on the continuity and obviously the success on the field. Worst field position to start a drive for Baylor tonight inside the five-yard line. Glasgow Martin gets a few yards back. Gets some breathing room away from that goal line. They went four and out on their last series. Went for it on fourth down, didn't make it. 
You know, of the things that Coach Weiss wanted to accomplish in this ball game, one was field position. He didn't want to give Baylor good field position and play on short fields. And other than the turnover on downs, they've done a good job of it. Thrown from the end zone. Petty up the sideline, incomplete. Intended for Jay Lee. Shepard wins a couple of interceptions, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery the last two weeks for the Jayhawks. Pretty good position there. Maybe he should have had that, though. Jay Lee uh, probably could have hauled it in. Corey Shepard was tight in the coverage. I think it probably just disrupted Jay Lee's vision. Either way, still a catchable ball. Shepard has shown that he's capable of running stride for stride with some of these Baylor perimeter receivers. This would be huge for this Kansas defense if they can get off the field right here. And great field position if they get a stop here. Play clock down to one. Did they get it off? See if they called timeout. Yeah, they did. Baylor calling timeout just before the play clock expired. This is the first time out of the first half called by Baylor. So Art Bryles and the Bears with their third and eight coming up and a four touchdown lead here in Lawrence. ESPNU College Football Primetime brought to you by Cabela's. Cabela's, it's in your nature. And Subway, try the Tuscan Chicken Melt $6 foot long special today. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Oklahoma wrapped up a win over Texas Tech. The Red Raiders fall from the ranks of the unbeaten. So nine unbeaten teams left in college football. These Baylor Bears are among them. And on third and eight, Lake Seastrom picks up the first down and more. Not across the 15 to the 18-yard line. Seems like it might be crazy. Look at the vision of Lake Seastrunk. He's shown tonight just about all the elements that you want in a running back, except for catching the ball out of the backfield. Patience, balance, and power in their vision. On first down, Petty pumps. Springs to the sideline and steps out of bounds. Bryce Petty is smart and fearless, and that's what Art Bryles looks for in a quarterback. Well, what he wanted to do was go to the slot. Victor Simmons, we talked about him. See him right here? Here's Simmons. He's running underneath this route. He's double covered. Petty makes the wise decision of pulling this football down and picking up yards with his feet. Martin bouncing off the defenders. Another first down. That's one thing that Bryles does. He always comes up aces with his quarterback. Certainly that's the case the last three years with RG3, Nick Florence last year, and Bryce Petty, who waited behind both those guys, now has his time to shine. Coach Bryles talked about Petty as the Jayhawks gets worked on. He mentioned that Petty did it the right way, that he prepared like he was going to be the starter, even though he was playing behind some pretty good ones, as you can see. You know, and it, it continued to improve even you know, the yardage that were, they were able to accumulate. Robert Griffin III, obviously, with the Heisman Trophy winner. Nick Florence stepped in. The offense you know, threw for even more yards. And now Bryce Petty, he's on track to break even those standards that have been set by the previous two uh, quarterbacks that preceded him. Kiba Agostino is making his way to the Kansas sideline under his own power. It's really amazing. You know, the quarterback is the most important position on the field for any team. And to lose your starter two years in a row and then come back better offensively is absolutely amazing. It speaks more to the efficiency of this offense than it does who's playing it. First and ten. Petty keeps. First down, he'll take on the defender and he'll get up, brush himself off after the 13-yard gain. You can see Clint Bowen, the defensive coordinator for Kansas, getting all over his defender. See him crash down inside. That's an obvious pull read for the quarterback. You see the defenders on the edge crashing in. Now he throws crossing route, Clay Fuller. 
to the 47 yard line. 10 yard gain. And Fuller now five catches, 38 yards. All kinds of time to throw, but nothing open. Looking for Fuller again. Dexter Linton, free safety, covering Fuller. Well, this offensive line doesn't get a lot of credit. No, they really don't. And, you know, and it's largely because you know you're so distracted by all the playmaking that's done on the perimeter. But the pace, and it all starts with the guys up front. Coleman, first down to the 29. It's a 17 yard reception. 18 first downs. And, and a lot of it is because of the pace that they're playing. Glasgow Martin, he'll get three. There we're, we're talking O line there. And you see a defender come unblocked on a power play. You know, oftentimes this, this offensive line is not asked to pass protect. You see there, Sewell Richardson. He's a guy that's probably going to play on Sundays at left guard for Baylor. Takes a shot at the end zone, incomplete. Coleman, the intended receiver. Yeah, Richardson, an All American, Big 12 Offensive Lineman of the Year last year. And Clint Bowman, the defensive coordinator for Kansas, says he's my favorite offensive lineman in the entire league. Yeah, he's a physical guy. You know, it's not oftentimes you hear a D coordinator compliment the opposing team's offensive front. Richardson, he plays with a nasty streak when you're 6'5", 340 pounds. That's a lot of nasty. This is a 12th play, the drive for Baylor. Jay Lee, first down to the 15. Shepard makes the tackle. You know, Clay, it's almost indefensible, really, when the receiver's able to get inside of the coverage. Shepard has demonstrated good coverage ability. That's an easy pitch and catch. Out to Norwood. And he'll dance for a couple of yards. He's got at 418 yards of total offense already in this game for Baylor. He's still 521 to go in the half. Martin. Maybe a yard. So now third down. Augustino with the tackle for Kansas. Well, we hit on it. When Baylor gets into this portion of the football field as you see the subst substitutions coming in. And they like to run the football. And what they'll do now is they substitute. We've got four wide receivers in the game, force the defense to spread out. And Kansas is going to take their chances versus the pass. Teddy. That probably should have been caught by Lee. And it's fourth down. The field goal unit comes out. That's Shepard again in coverage, and that's, that's basically the same pattern that we knocked on before, saying it's almost indefensible if they get inside. If, if you allow them inside, the throw was right on time. Lee's got to come up with a catch, and that's another six points. 30-yard field goal attempt for Jones. Five for seven this year. And he's got it. 31 to nothing, Baylor. Matt's in the studio for a rundown of what we're going to be talking about at halftime. Matt. Thank you, Clay. We'll be talking about Missouri, which is up big on South Carolina early on. We will update you on that. Baylor, now the lone undefeated team from the Big 12. We'll show you what happened to Texas Tech in Norman. Top two BCS teams put out big numbers. How's Oregon doing? We'll update you there as well. Clay. All right, thanks, Matt. The Baylor schedule considered easy by uh, just about everybody who takes a good look at it. 113th easiest schedule in the country. But again, the toughest tests for these Bears lie ahead. They host Oklahoma. Still have to face Texas Tech. They're at Oklahoma State, three ranked teams in a row. Then also have games at TCU and host Texas to wrap up the regular season. Well, they lost five games last year, and they've got three of those teams that they lost to a season ago yet to face. After this week, they'll get some rest. 
take a bye week before they face the Sooners. The Sooners will have a bye week as well to prepare for this Baylor offense. But their toughest work is, is in front of them, and they've got to have to play here tonight. Darian Miller lets it go into the end zone. It's a touchback. And Art Bryles has a losing record against every team left on the Bears' schedule since he's been at Baylor, losing record against these teams. The difference is, though, this season the defense is much improved. And when you look at where he has to play, they've got Oklahoma at home, Texas Tech at a neutral site. That helps Baylor. They're a different ball club at home versus away. You see the strength of schedule. You know, Texas Tech went down today, losing to Oklahoma. They had reached the top 10 with the 118th easiest schedule. Baylor's not far behind at 113. They really haven't had to prove themselves against much competition so far. Heaps starts this series at quarterback and throws a strike. Caught at the 38-yard line. That's a 14-yard pickup for Matthews. That's the way you got to open the possession. Try to get some type of momentum going. Obviously, with heaps in the ball game, the passing game all the more critical because of the lack of run element at the quarterback position. Throws it into the flat, incomplete. Brandon Burton, who moved from running back to fullback this year, hadn't even turned around yet, and the ball was already on its way, and got their wires crossed, heaps and bourbon. And Bourbon's a guy that they've asked to step up with Tony Pearson's absence, whom we've not seen much of no. this ballgame. He was out there on the first couple of series. They took some shots with him, but basically fruitless. Second and ten, Heaps is complete to Parmalee. Not across midfield. They'll move the chains after the 12-yard hookup. Joe Williams makes the tackle, and Kansas moving the football here with just under four minutes to go. And we mentioned, you know, Heaps, he threw, even in their first, uh, early in the first quarter, he was starting to get more dialed in. And now here are two first down completions. Heaps getting some pressure up in front. No unloaded. Second down and 10. Terrence Lloyd and Byron Bonds breathing down Heaps' neck. Stanford, Oregon State, Fresno State, and San Diego State coming your way soon. Fresno is undefeated. Tell you what, that's a banged up Stanford football team facing a very dangerous Oregon State Beaver offense. John Mannion and the Beavers haven't lost since the season opener. Incomplete third down. Terrence Lloyd again the pressure. Coming off that edge for Baylor. Kansas Jayhawks team hasn't won a Big 12 game since November of 2010. They've lost 24 straight league games. Charlie Weiss hired in 2011 to turn around this program. It's obvious there's still a lot of work to do. They'd like to get on the board here before halftime, get a little momentum. Heaps time to throw. Cox and fires incomplete. Jermaine Mundine, the tight end, the intended receiver. Now some pushing and shoving. Terrell Burt covered Mundine. Punting unit comes out as this drive dries up for the Jayhawks. But, you know, there's at least some bright spots there, and that Heaps you know, seems to be more comfortable. Obviously, was pressured on one of those pass attempts, but seems a little bit more comfortable delivering the football downfield. I don't know if it's going to be enough in time, but something to build on going forward. Seventh punt for Pardula. He's going to go through the end zone. They'll have it at the 20. Bryce Petty said it before. Art Bryles knows a smart quarterback when he sees one. He's got one in Bryce Petty. He's a quick decision maker, knows when to throw it downfield, knows when to throw it away. Yeah, you know, it's not just making the decision, but owning it. And the ball hits his hands, and it's right back out. He runs the play action. He's got to be able to deliver strikes downfield and also quickly top of the perimeter. Good timing, and he's got excellent vision. 
when he delivers the football on time and in stride. You know, really, a lot of the incompletions we've seen in this ball game, other than the first series, they've been drops where receivers have been able to get their hands on the football. Penny on first down. Caught! Antoine Goodley. Excuse me, that's Robbie Rhodes, the Under Armour All-American out of Southwest High School in Fort Worth. And now Ja'Cory Shepard is down. That's a 52-yard hookup. Petty to Rhodes, his first catch tonight. You talk about Petty, you see Shepard, I think he's just cramping up. And they've got him running all over the football field. Baylor's not scared to run some vertical routes. You see... Robbie Rhodes all the way at the top of the formation. And watch Petty. This ball, that's a flatly thrown ball. That ball's on a rope. And he's just delivering it downfield, allowing Rhodes to run into it, trusting his receiver to get a step. I don't know if Rhodes saw that right away. It's almost like he was looking up for it and then reacted late, still made the catch. I think he was expecting that ball to come up higher and then noticed it coming down toward his hands late. Well, you know, Petty, you talk about his decision-making and his fearlessness. You know, to me, when you watch him play, he makes a decision, and then he owns it, and he goes after it. And right there, he didn't loft the football. He knew that that was the coverage and the matchup that he was looking for. He delivered the football to the spot. And it's a challenge. You know, you saw that as I was pointing out. You see Ja'Cory Shepard headed off the football field. And that ball was thrown pretty level. I mean, that was a yeah. dart that he slung out there. And you're right. I think Rhodes was probably expecting the ball to drop in with a little bit more of an arc. But Petty makes a decision, and then he slings it out there. And he's hit onto Antoine Goodley on some passes that way where on a go route, look at the trajectory of this football as it comes in. It's not dropping in. I mean, it comes sliding in there, pokes it, basically spears him in the hip. You don't have a choice. <laughs> you protect your spleen and make this reception. Thirteen yards here, averaging on first down. Here's another first down for Baylor. Seastrom. And that's how they kill you. They just gash you on the ground. Flag comes in. Seastrom. He's closing in on 100 yards. It's going to be a face mask call. There you see it. And that's Keon Stowers, the nose tackle. Eh, I'd, give, I'd give that an incidental. I don't think he, you know, Seastrunk looks like he's got his visor on tonight. Once upon a time, though, though, that would have been incidental. Not anymore. They are protecting no, no ball, ball carriers. Face mask. Ah, forget what I just said. They're picking up the flag. What do you know about that? Good job, officials. You know, to me, it was, it was, he spun C-Strunk around. A lot of times, that's what they're looking for. They want to see the ball carry, the receiver. If their head snaps around, but see C-Strunk, he's got that visor on. It's not a lot of, they're not a lot of face mask to grab. Usually, the fingers go into the top where the visor is. Second and five, C-Strunk ran right into the hands of Kiba Agostino. That's a loss of two. As the senior from Katy, Texas makes a big play to force a third down and seven for the Bears at the 25 of Kansas. Agostino did a great job of getting up field quickly and stopping that run before it could ever get started. Play fake, Petty to throw. Got him in! Touchdown, Tevin Reese. Touchdown, Baylor. Number 16, Tevin Reese. I don't know if there's a better wide receiver duo in the country than Reese and Goodley. We have seen both shine tonight. Statistically speaking, there isn't. There isn't a better one in the country. And that's what makes it so dangerous more than anything else is knowing that you've got two weapons like them outside. And another PAT for Aaron Jones. Baylor has had nine big plays of 20 yards or more tonight. They've opened up a 38-0 lead. Well, they go right after Ja'Cory Shepard. There's replacement. Darius Willis is going to bail out. So he's showing pressure, and he's going to run underneath 
the inside receiver and the outside receiver swap. And you see that? It just creates a, a just enough separation where Reese can get underneath the coverage. You see that? And there's, there's nothing magical to what Baylor is doing here. It's the comfort that the quarterback and the receivers have. See, Petty, he keeps piling up numbers like this, Clay. And with the schedule that he has coming, if he continues on this pace, and you talk Marcus Mariota, you talk Jameis Winston, and eventually the guy who's delivering passes to Tevin Reese, like he has tonight, Bryce Petty, he's going to get mentioned in this Heisman race more and more prominently. Because this offense, the way it's running, the hub of it is the quarterback position. We've seen him tonight. He's even got a rushing touchdown. And it's going to be another touchback. Now, the only goal that Petty has stated that he has is Pasadena. That means playing in the national championship game. But compared to the other quarterbacks who are on the Heisman consideration list, I mean, he's right up there. That's QBR, opponent adjusted total QBR, and Bryce Petty, 95.1. And that opponent adjusted means, you know, they take into account. Well, how much competition is this guy really facing? And he's still that high, and it hasn't been great competition. And that changes with their next ball game, and that's where it goes to the back half of this season. It's only going to go higher if he continues to pile up the stats the way he has. Darian Miller into the teeth of that oh, Baylor front. No gain, second down. Eddie Lackey, the reigning Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week. Eight tackles and a sack. Also a fumble recovery that set up a touchdown last week against Iowa State. A minute and a half to go here before halftime. 38 to nothing, Baylor. James Sims. And that's his 12th carry. He's got 51 yards on the night. The chase for the Sprint Cup hits the home stretch. And Kenseth, Jimmy Johnson lead the chase in Martinsville. And four races left until NASCAR's best driver raises the Sprint Cup, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series in Martinsville tomorrow at 1 on ESPN. Third down at 5 for the Jayhawks. A chilly night. These guys got short pants. <laughs> They're showing some toughness, man. I think they could do that. Yeah. And draw play. And it's going to be fourth down. And there's 32 seconds to go. Baylor calls a timeout. You know, they're going to get a chance to get the ball back with some time on the clock. And this offense, we've seen it all season long. They can score quickly. 32 seconds is certainly plenty of time for Art Bryles to work with. Let's take a look at the quest for the coach's trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. Art Bryles, what he has done in six short years. You see that top three in total offense the last three seasons. We've already hammered home how good this offense is playing this season. You see the bowl games that they've been able to pile up. Let's keep in mind that this is Baylor. Yeah. Baylor that was the doormat of this conference. And they're doing to teams what was done to them prior to Bryles arriving in Waco. Norwood called for the fair catch. Didn't field it cleanly. And Kansas is saying they have it. No indication yet. Tell you what, Clay, you call a timeout, you try to squeeze another possession. Still nothing from the officials as they're talking it over. It looked like John Wartell, the punt snapper, recovered it. I don't really know what they're discussing. It looks like he came up with a clean one. The field is a muff punt, but it was recovered by the receiving team. First down, Baylor. Yep. Levi Norwood was able to scramble and get back over the football for the Bears. You see Norwood calling for the fair catch. He gets disrupted. 
you know, I don't know. Did, did it, it didn't look like they ruled that Norwood had the ball. He certainly doesn't have the football at the end of the play. Not real sure how it is that Wartell didn't get credited with a recovery here. Because hmm. I, I didn't see the officials come running in declaring that it was Baylor ball. Clock running, 20 seconds to go. Shock Linwood runs it straight up the middle. Gets out to the 38-yard line. Baylor has a timeout left. And they're just going to head to the locker room. A little surprised that they didn't take a shot as quick as they can score. I'll tell you what, they think they probably just feel lucky that they didn't give up an opportunity for Kansas to get a score. 38 to nothing, Baylor at the half. And Charlie Weiss and the Kansas Jayhawks head to the locker room to regroup. Let's go down to Don Davenport. Here we go, second week in a row. Your defense pitching a shutout at the half. What's been key to their performances? You know, I mean, really both sides are playing extremely well. Defense really kind of bailed out the offense early in the game. We, I think our first two series we didn't score. Defense got stops, and then we got a little momentum. You know, our guys gained a little confidence, and we're playing better right now. You had a little momentum. Why, uh, why no touchdown there? Go for the touchdown. You know, I mean, just, just getting out of the half. We'll come out and play a full 30 this second half and see what happens. Thanks, Coach. Right, thank you. 505 yards of total offense for the Bears in the first half. They averaged 714. 38 to nothing at the break. We now go to the studio. The halftime report with Matt. Thank you, Clay. Yes, more than halfway to their averages and total yards and points. 38 nothing. Baylor. Only thing working for Kansas right now, the hat of that fan we just saw. Matt Schick, Jason C. <laughs> Matt's questionable. Charles Arbuckle. I would, I would agree with you. There was a knee-jerk reaction on my part. Uh, look, it's Kansas. We know that. We've seen that. But... 38 nothing, still impressive what we've seen from Baylor all year. And just think, they've only gained a little momentum and a little confidence in the first half, according to our coach, Art Riles. You just look at this offense of Baylor, and it's really just, it's prolific. It's Oregon-esque, okay? So what they do offensively isn't going to change with the opponent. Clearly, Kansas can't do anything to slow them down. Yeah, I think, you know, Clay said something interesting. He said every team that's left on the schedule for them, they have a losing record in Art Riles' tenure. So it'll be interesting to see if any of those teams can pressure them take them to the half, make them work a little bit. But that's the problem. We haven't seen it. Baylor has really been able to just run rug shot over all the teams they played, and they do it by the first half. Guys taking breaks. Bryce Petty going to sit down. Lake Seastrunk. They don't have to play the second half. We'll keep you posted if they score it all during the half. <laughs> uh, there are two of those teams that they face later on in the season. So far, it's been a night to forget for Kansas fans. They're down 38 to nothing at the break. To the eighth-ranked Baylor Bears. College football primetime presented by Five Hour Energy. Alongside Matt Stinchcomb, Don Davenport, down on the field, I'm Clay Manfred. Yeah, we could talk about the offense again for Baylor here at halftime, Matt. They put up 505 yards of total offense, 38 points. But the defense for Baylor this year, compared to the last couple, I think is what's going to set this team apart, and that's why they're a legit national title contender. How good do you have to be offensively for us to almost have to dismiss the yeah. 505 yards that they've accumulated? But, I mean, you look at what the story has been for Baylor and the focus on the offensive side of the ball, but the defense and how it has stymied yet another offense this week. The fact that they are playing at such a high level or a higher level, and they're going to have to continue to play well through the balance of the season, especially with the schedule that they have awaiting them, better offenses and more talent on the football field that they'll be facing, starting with the Oklahoma Sooners. But so far this year, the difference has been largely on the defensive side of the ball. Aaron Jones kicks it off, and the Jayhawks, Darian Miller will down it. Touch back out to the 25. That Baylor defense will get out on the field here right away. They have four, six, three and outs on nine Kansas possessions tonight. Here's a look at our first half stats brought to you by John Deere. And the green of John Deere, always impressive. 
around the country, especially in Central Texas. A lot of those tractors running around, but the green of Baylor is what everybody's talking about this year. It's almost the same color green. <laughs> it is. It's the sponsor of the program more heavily. 505 yards only to halftime. Jake Heaps, the starting quarterback tonight for Kansas, to start the second half. We'll see more of Montel Cozart, I'm sure, too. James Sims on first down, a short game. Bryce Hager, the middle linebacker, the leader of that Baylor defense, makes a stop. You know, Clay, two quarters to play, so you don't want to fast forward this thing. But you know, you, you've got a, a six-score ball game right now. And the challenge for either coach is, and for Coach Weiss, your team having something to play for more than just pride. And for Art Bryles, keeping his unit sharp, knowing that they've got a sizable margin. Draw play, the handoff to Brandon Bourbon. And it's a first down. McAllister makes the tackle as we go down to Dawn. You're going to see a lot more from James Sims in Kansas this second half. Head coach Charlie Weiss said that they have to win the second half, not look at the whole game. And the way they're going to do that is by getting the ball to James Sims. They said not having Tony Pearson, a lot of that first half really hurt them. They didn't have their deep threat, and he is questionable to return. Yeah, Tony Pearson played in the first couple of series and then was on the sideline the rest of the first half. Complete to Mundine, the tight end. It's going to be another first down for KU. Hager again makes the tackle. Charlie Weiss shook up his offense a couple of weeks ago, handing the passing game duties to the quarterback coach Ron Paulus and the run game to tight ends coach Jeff Blasco. Yeah, and, you know, obviously those coaches can only do so much. You know, Don just hit on it. Tony Pearson is probably their best athlete on the offensive side of the ball. He was only limited in this ball game. Probably doesn't come back in it. Late pitch to Bourbon. And Ahmad Dixon makes the tackle. It's a four-yard pickup. Weiss had been calling the plays until last week. But I, I think he realizes that there have been some changes in college football. And maybe he's just not suited for anymore, and that's why he's handing things off to Paulus and Blasco. And he also mentioned, you know, it's a lot easier to call a game from the booth. You see Ron Paulus up there calling the plays in the passing game. And Blasco's the run game coordinator. And Sims is bringing a third down at about four. But here's the thing is that it really doesn't matter who's calling the plays. If you've got an offensive line that's just now starting to settle in from a lineup standpoint, and your best threat at the receiver position has been sidelines. You see Pearson there is on the sideline. He's not going to gain any yards for you or make any catches standing over there. You know, Jake Heaps and Cozart, if they can't throw the football any more effectively than that, it really doesn't matter what plays you call. Third and four, here comes the pressure. Got rid of it. Should have been caught for a first down, but Bourbon dropped it. That's the second drop for Kansas tonight. The other thing, too, about this offense, there's some guys that could be playing this year that aren't. Seven guys on the scout team that are transfers or red shirts would be in the starting lineup that would help this struggling Kansas offense. But they're on the sideline or on the scout team. You know, we were talking to Coach Weiss yesterday. We said, you know, how far out are you? What's it going to take? And he says, we've got guys. They're just not available this year. Nick Harwell, the transfer from Miami, Ohio, he thinks he's a game-changing type talent. Ninth punt already tonight for Pardula. Drops it inside the five. Can they keep it out of the end zone? No, it's going to be a touchback. Great effort. But Baylor's going to have it at the 20-yard line. Bryce Petty and that offense go back to work when we come back. When you think about Florida State's offense, you think about Winston. Oh, he did get out of there. And then he throws a touchdown. What a remarkable Houdini job calling Primus Davis. Manziel puts the brakes on and comes back the other way and touchdown. This is stuff you just can't teach. Mariota going to go deep. He's got Hop. Touchdown. There's Heisman and Trophy candidates all over the field. ESPN Heismanology through week eight. Marcus Mariota, the quarterback at Oregon, 
19 touchdowns, no interceptions coming into the weekend. Oregon taking on UCLA tonight. Jameis Winston, though, your favorite right now to win the Heisman. Seastruck behind the line of scrimmage, makes it up, and turns this into something positive. He got a first down out of that, out to the 33. <laughs> There's a guy maybe that'll play his way into the Heisman talk. Well, it's just as a zone to the right, and it's well defended, and he's turned back. The backside pursuit is there. Lake Seastruck was a guy that said, hey, I'm going to win the Heisman this year. And you know, Baylor yep. probably thought they got two potential Heisman candidates. Probably Seastruck over Petty. Crossing route, Norwood, first down, still on his feet, and cut down at the 49 of Kansas. That is a 19-yard play. It's got to be frustrating with Clint Bowen right now. You know, he's got to see the poor tackling in the passing game on the previous snap. you got to run bottled up, and it leaks for a first down. Now Petty wants a deep play downfield. He's got Coleman. Touchdown. Wow. This offense is razor sharp. Greg Allen gets burned. It's a 49-yard touchdown play. Third touchdown pass for Petty tonight. Greg Allen, he's the guy in on the coverage on the last touchdown pass to Tevin Reese. This time, he's just all alone. And in fact, he just gets left. Uh, at the line of scrimmage. Extra point is good for Aaron good. Jones. Three plays, 80 yards in 54 seconds. See at the top of your screen and look, there's no help deep because they're inching towards and you're just covered up man outside. Petty knows exactly where he wants to go with this football. The play action buys what could have been deep coverage. Otherwise, Allen is all alone. And you never, you talk about a lonely feeling. You know, left tackles, they're out on an island by themselves, rarely get help and protection. Cornerbacks, they get stuck out on an island versus this offense. It's gonna be one of the loneliest feelings in the world, especially knowing that you're only soon to be joined by a football and largely by a, a reception over top. You and I were talking with Charlie Weiss yesterday about this Baylor offense, and he said, we, we've got to win the field position battle. And you know, Kansas has done a fairly decent job field position-wise. The average starting field position for Baylor tonight, their own 23. With that said, they put up 45 points. It doesn't matter. I mean, it really, it makes it maybe more difficult when you think about it. But this is the most explosive offense in college football this year, the Baylor Bears. When you look at them, Plays of 20, 30, 40, 50 yards or more. Nobody has more than this offense. So, yeah, you don't want to give them a short field, but you give them a long field. All this is padding their total offense stats. Darian Miller on the return, and he stopped short of the 30 yard line. It's a 26 yard return. You were talking about Jameis Winston earlier, that he is your favorite right now for the Heisman Trophy Award. Compare the numbers with Johnny Manziel, who won it last year as a freshman. Well, you know, they don't compare, really. I mean, when you, when you look at the combination, now the total yards Manziel's going to win out because of the rushing production. But Jameis Winston, you know, he's, he's lighting it up in Jimbo Fisher's offense. And what's amazing is we're talking about a redshirt freshman last year in Manziel, redshirt freshman this year in Winston. Sims on the carry. Penalty flag comes in. It's a short game, one yard for James Sims. Rick Lumiere from the Big 12. Holding number 65 of the offense. The penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot. It remains first down. Juco transfer Mike Smithberg, the right guard, with the penalty. Take a look at the top of your screen. Watch this penetration. He just jets right inside on an inside move, and Smithberg trying to finish. And as a former offensive lineman, I will take exception with that holding call. Of course you will. I mean, that was just a good finish to that ball. He was going down anyway. <laughs> well, there was a late handoff. 
to Bourbon. And to his credit, he gets it to the 23-yard line. That was a slow, developing play. Late handoff. He gets four out of it. So now second down and long for Kansas. And last beat Baylor in 2007. That was a dream season for the Kansas Jayhawks. They won 12 games, including the Orange Bowl, under then head coach Mark Mangino. That must seem like... A hundred years ago for the Kansas Jayhawks football fans around here. Yeah, as high as number two in the country that season. Keeps dumps it off to Sims, and he is quickly eradicated short of the 20-yard line. That's a loss of one. There's Eddie Lackey again, who reminds Phil Bennett of Dat Wynn. Remember him? Played at Texas A&M back when... Phil Bennett was coaching with the Aggies. Gritty football player was that win. Same with Eddie Lackey. He's got a good nose for the ball. He's an instinctive player. Diagnosis plays quickly. Mark it at the 21. Third and 17. For Kansas. And third down conversions have not been their strong suit tonight. Heaps. Well, he almost had that picked off. Should have been by K.J. Morton. And now fourth down. Enjoying the food here at Memorial Stadium. That's about all they can do. Because watching this offense is difficult. Well, it's, well, at least it's not very cold tonight. I don't know. I mean, you, you look for the positives. And despite the quotes in the final, you look at it offensively. Outside of really one drive in the first half, Kansas unable to really get anything going. Baylor will start at the 33 when we come back. 47-yard punt, 9.21 to go. Third quarter, 45-0, Baylor. ESPNU College Football Primetime. Brought to you by the Discover It Card. It's a game changer. And the new 2014 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Tire rack drive recap. The scoring drive for Baylor here in the third quarter. Three plays, 80 yards in 54 seconds. And surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, that's only their third quickest scoring drive of the night. They had a 51-second scoring drive in the first half and a 41-second scoring drive in the first half. You know, Art Bryles says he wants to give fans what they want to see. And what they want to see is a lot of plays. See the last hookup for a score. And that's what they get with this Baylor offense. If you blink, you miss something big. And Petty hooks up with Reese. He has a first down. Mark him out at the 47-yard line. Tevin Reese went to the same high school as Lake Seastrum. Temple High School. Give him 14 on that one. Some athletes on that high school. Oh, Glasgow Martin. Out to midfield. Redshirt freshman doing nice things this year. That's one thing they've got, too. Is depth certainly at receiver? We haven't seen a bunch of Goodley tonight. He's he's made his catches. But Coleman, Lee, Norwood have complimented Reese tonight. And now Glasgow Martin rips one off inside the 40. Ball comes loose. Kansas says they have it. And they do. Michael Reynolds knocked it out. And Dexter Linton is going to be credited with the recovery. That's the first turnover of the game for either team. You see Reynolds, is he coming in? You know, it looks like his left arm reached around and punched that football out. And that's becoming more and more prominent where defenders in the act of tackling, yeah, he, he reaches around and punches the football out. It looked like it was intentional, but more and more, we're in the act of tackling. These defenders are attacking the football and raking it out. Cozart hands it off to Bourbon. 
And now we're getting a report that Antoine Goodley's out for the rest of the game with muscle tightness. That's why we haven't seen him much since the first quarter. Well, in visiting with the coaches you know, of Baylor, they mentioned that you know, as good as Goodley and Reese are, they feel as if the next phase, the next layer of talent they have at receivers just waiting their turn. So here's an opportunity for them to step up. Sims. Stopped at the 41. Actually spotted at the 42. Sells the tackle. So third down here for Kansas and three to go. Just think about what that means. When you're talking about this Baylor offense even going forward, not even the balance of this season, but knowing that they are apprenticing you know, the next quote-unquote generation of talent at that receiver position. When you're talking about already having the top two duo at the receiving spot, knowing that you've got talent to step up and fill their board. Cozart a completion to his tight end, Mundine, first down, spins out to the 49-yard line. Penalty flag on the field. Just the third completion for Cozart tonight. We'll see if it stands up. Chop up, number 70 of the offense. The penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot. It's still third down. That's Gavin Howard, the center. Gavin Howard's right here. There's a lot going on. Oh, boy. I mean, yeah, the, you know, the rule is this. If you're engaged in any way up top with another to offensive lineman, you can't cut. You know, the adjacent lineman or any other lineman can't cut the defender. And there, technically, I suppose, that was a chop block. I can tell by your tone you're not impressed. Yeah, I'm not. Cozart. Taking a shot deep. Has a man caught. Biggest play of the game offensively for Kansas. Rodriguez Coleman. Down to the 27 yard line of Baylor. Cozart, he's afforded some time. And he had some poise there and delivered the ball. You know, if he leads him just enough, he's still running with that football and may have been able to get in for the score regardless the most explosive offensive play we've seen 45 yards on that play the juco transfer rodriguez coleman i've been waiting for him to emerge kansas on the march high snap they're able to get the handoff to sims but cozart had to do a juggling act before he got it to sims that's a loss of one on the play that's another great play by the quarterback. Unfortunately, it was just to be able to handle the snap. Gavin Howard. He's having a rough night. He's throwing a little curveball back there. And you know, it, when you're operating out of the gun, you got to deal with handling the snap. And then because it was a handoff, you got to get it cleanly to your running back. Great job by Kozart. Now Kozart is going to keep it. He's pretty athletic to the 22-yard line. Charlie Weiss is excited about Montel Cozart. He gets six there to bring up third down and about five. 2011 Player of the Year in Kansas at Bishop Miege High School. Played for the current Kansas offensive line coach, Tim Grunhard. Earning his stripes tonight after playing his first collegiate game against Oklahoma last week. Only nine snaps, though. Much more tonight. He's played in both halves. Third down and five. Cozart pitches it out. Bourbon first down and more. Touchdown, Jayhawks. And now Montel Cozart has engineered his first collegiate touchdown drive. That man's happy because... Cozart just demonstrated everything that they said they felt like they had in him from a skill set standpoint. That he could pass the football effectively, delivered on the street down, downfield to Rodriguez Coleman. But then the mobility that he demonstrated in the run game operating the option. 
Matthew Wyman on for the extra point, and he bangs it home. Kansas is on the board with 4.51 to go here in the third quarter. Cozart and the offense, a six-play, 64-yard drive in three minutes and 40 seconds. And it's been a tough night, mostly for the Kansas Jayhawks, but that sideline smiling now as Bourbon takes it in for six. Baylor has been called the Oregon of the Southwest. Art Bryles takes exception to that. He thinks it's the other way around, that Oregon is maybe the Baylor of the Northwest. Either way, these are two very potent offenses. A lot of similarities. Maybe they go about it initially different. One uses the run to set up the pass. One uses the pass to set up the run. The results are the same. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the numbers, the statistics, the yardage piled up, the pace at which they're playing, you know, the first halves of games, nobody's running their offenses faster than Baylor or Oregon. You know, I think the, the most glaring difference is the quarterback position, and not from a production standpoint. But when you look at it, even though Bryce Petty has a rushing touchdown, he is not the threat that Marcus Mariota is in the running game. After the first Kansas points of the night, Corey Coleman on the return. He had a 97-yard return for a touchdown last week against Iowa State. This was coming into the night. Baylor, about 65 points per game. Oregon, about 58 points per game. 714 total offense for Baylor, 643 for Oregon. Look at those yards per play. That is tough to stop. No, you're, you're not stopping it. When you get yardage like that per play, nobody's stopping you, really. Uh, Bryce Petty is out, Seth Russell, the backup quarterback, is on for Baylor. And he'll hand off on first down to Glasgow Martin, picks up a couple. Seth Russell, dual threat backup, had a 40-yard touchdown run last week against Iowa State. Pretty impressive for, for the redshirt freshman. He's played in every game except one two weeks ago at Kansas State, which says a lot about what this offense has been doing to allow the backups to come in and get a lot of quality snaps. Again, Glasgow Martin, it's going to bring up about 35. Not only did they get a conference win versus Kansas State, but they also got an opportunity to play meaningful snaps in the second half. And this is something that Baylor hadn't had to deal with, really. We talked to Phil Bennett uh, going into their game versus Iowa State. He was saying, look, my defense, they hadn't really even played in the second half. They didn't know what it was like to go out there and break a sweat in the third quarter. Russell, first down. There's Clay Fuller. And now for tonight's Wrangler five-star player of the game. We're going to give it to Bryce Petty. There was a penalty flag on that last play. 20 for 32. Welcome to pass by making contact to his helmet. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Foul is charged to number 27 on the defense. First down. Penalty against Kansas there. As you look at Petty's numbers, 430 through the air and three touchdowns. Also had a rushing touchdown. Uh, and, you know, Clay, last week we saw a bunch of guys getting ejected for targeting. As we look at Bryce Petty, they're protecting these, these quarterbacks, their defenseless players. And on that play, Victor Simmons came in, and, yeah, he hit Seth Russell in the head. It was a glancing blow at best. Well, they said roughing the passer, which to me is the right call. Last week, you know, we're getting calls that ended up being like ejections. They're saying that they're targeting the quarterback. That, that, that penalty has gotten out of control. The officials do a good job of making the appropriate call here. Shock Linwood, the 41 yard line. Coming into the week, 52 targeting fouls in college football at the FBS level. It's actually down from 2012. And it appears that the defenders are getting the message of how to defend. So they're not being called for that. Ball loose. Still loose, and it's out of bounds. Who's got it? Stay with Baylor. 
It's been that kind of night. Seth Russell lost it. Victor Simmons knocked it away, and then it rolled all the way to the 34-yard line out of bounds. Ruling on the field is that it was a fumble that went forward and then out of bounds. The ball will be placed at the spot of the fumble. Second down. And they're going to mark it back at the 43-yard line of Kansas Baylor's ball. That's two fumbles tonight. You see there, Victor Simmons, we were talking about him earlier. He chops the ball out of there. Shepard's right there. He had an opportunity to come up with it. Incapable of doing it. And Kansas tonight, two shots at recovering fumbles. Both times, Baylor able to maintain possession. This Baylor offense, one was a muff punt, I know, but they'll put the ball on the floor. Russell pressured, gets away from Kevin Young, now hoists it deep downfield, and almost intercepted. Dexter Linton nearly picked that off. There's a marker down at the 35-yard line. Ineligible receiver downfield, number 76 of the offense. The foul will be declined, fourth down. There's Kevin Palmer, the tackle, who was downfield. It's fourth down. It's a small miracle that Baylor doesn't get more of those calls, really, because a lot of times we talked about they have a built-in run-pass option in all their plays. The offensive front, they'll be run blocking. They'll be blocking the run. They don't know what's going on behind them. They just know that they've got an assignment, and they block the run, and the ball has to come out. The ball has to come out quickly. Otherwise, you've got illegal men downfield. They've only had it called one time this season so far. Now two. See our Bryles on the sideline? He, he's visibly upset. This is his second string unit. He expects them to execute just like the first string unit. That one goes into the end zone touchback. Kansas will have it at the 20. But all in all, it's been a good night for Art Bryles, Baylor Bears. They lead it late in the third quarter big. There's Seth Russell, the backup for Baylor. Let's go down to Don Davenport. You know, you would have thought that this Baylor defense just lost the lead after Kansas scored that touchdown. Defensive coordinator Phil Bennett giving his guys an earful here on the sideline. They were not happy that they gave up seven. But you know what? Phil Bennett still teaching, still coaching, and still making adjustments. He's on the dry erase board. He's going over footwork with his guys at this point in the game, still coaching. Phil Bennett upset. Art Bryles upset with the offensive unit on their last series. As Cozart lost the football. And now Baylor gets it back. Montel Cozart, who had such a impressive scoring drive last time out, now turns it over. Brody Trahan knocked it out, the weak side linebacker. And Baylor recovers. First Kansas turnover tonight. Yeah. He got his helmet right on the football there. You could see it. The ball comes away from Cozart's body. He's just carrying it loosely. You gotta have three points of contact. Your hand, the bend of your elbow, and then your rib cage. You hear these coaches talking about that. When that ball swings away from the body, that's where it can pop out. And Big Sean Oakman recovered it. He's got those big long arms, 6'9", 270 pounds. Shock Linwood. On first down, gets five. Sean Oakman, big transfer from Penn State. Fifth in the nation in tackles for loss. He's got a bright future on this Baylor defense and maybe beyond college. Another fumble. These teams are getting sloppy, loose inside the 10-yard line. And again, they're going to unstack the pile. Baylor recovered, it's a first down. I tell you what, Clay, in situations like this, this, this is the nastiest part of football. What this is goes, where injuries happen. Well, what goes on at the bottom piles like this where a ball's loose, there's all kinds of things guys are willing to do to get the ball back. Seth Russell apparently oh, recovered. He's a recovery by Baylor. Over the line to gain his first down. That's his second fumble in two series. We'll see him. He's doing exactly what Cozart was doing. The ball's flopping all over the place. Victor Simmons comes in and he tackles the ball. 
And that ball comes right out. Watch, see that right hand? He comes down and rakes the ball out. And Simmons, that's the second time he stripped the ball loose. Second forced fumble for Simmons. And Linwood inside the five to the four yard line. Shot Linwood. Well, Baylor got the ball back. I'll tell you what, it wasn't without a fight. You know, things get twisted and poked. Fingers get bent, all kinds of things. Well, Russell, after the earful he got, he might have been the one that was doing it, whatever it took to get that ball back. Touchdown, Baylor. Shock Linwood. Takes it in from four yards out. His sixth touchdown of the season as Baylor punches it in after the Kansas turnover. We talked about it earlier. Baylor's had to earn it most of tonight, but this was a short football field. You see Linwood running with power just right over Shepard. Ja'Cory Shepard's had a tough night. He's been asked to, to cover man on man outside, and come in and run support. And Linwood brings the wood. Look at Kyle Peterson, the backup kicker. Max at home to make it 52 to 7 with a minute to go here in the third quarter. Total offense now for Baylor at 650 yards. Kansas 200 yards of total offense in comparison. Later tonight on the U2 teams from the SWAC, Alabama A&M taking on Alabama State. ESPN News College Football Primetime. Presented by McDonald's, 10.30 start here on the U, also live on Watch ESPN. Four plays, 19 yards in a minute and 16 seconds on that last Baylor scoring drive. Also a huge matchup out of the Pac-12. Cardinal, Stanford, and Oregon State, number six versus number 25 here on ESPN and also on the Watch ESPN app. Stanford said they're a little beat up, looking for their fourth win over a top 25 team. They play Oregon in two weeks. We were talking about Oregon earlier. That'll be a huge matchup in the Pac-12. and. Again, Oregon going to be tested. They've been tested a lot, certainly more than Baylor has this year. We'll oh, see what happens in a couple of weeks in that match. Yeah, it's not saying much when we're looking at you know the hundred, what is it, the hundred tenth easiest schedule in the country that Baylor's faced so far. To, to argue that Oregon has faced a much tougher slate of games. To the 30-yard line, Darian Miller, and we go to the studio and an update with Matt. Thanks, Clay. Baylor doing its thing. Oregon starting to do its thing. Out west after a Brett Hundley interception set Oregon up in Bruin territory. Marcus Mariota to Braylon Addison for the touchdown, and they've just added another touchdown. It's 34-14 in the fourth. Clay. All right, thanks, Matt. Heisman candidate Marcus Mariota and the Oregon Ducks. And a running play for the Jayhawks. It's Sims. Takes a handout from Cozart. Now, the first BCS standings came out on Sunday night. Here they are. Oregon, maybe as a surprise to some people, not number two. Instead, it's Florida State after the big win over Clemson. Yeah, that's one of those take a deep breath and just relax because Oregon, if they continue to take care of their business, it's going to come right back to them. In fact, the human polls, they both had Florida State at number three. It's the computers and the strength of schedule that Florida State has faced thus far that bumped them into the number two spot. First down run, but then the ball comes out at the end. Sims coughed it up this time. And Kansas is going to keep it. Fusi Malahohi. The junior from San Francisco recovering for the Jayhawks. Well, you know, there's a reason why 
Uh, Oakman. Oakman should have come down with it again. He couldn't wrap those big, long arms around it. That's why they asked the offensive linemen to cover down. It's like following your shot in basketball. Three quarters in the books, 52-7 Baylor. Game track through three quarters, presented by Taco Bell. 650 yards of total offense for Baylor. They average 714. And just 93 passing yards tonight for Kansas. Seen a couple of Coza, a couple of quarterbacks in this game tonight. Montel Cozart is in there now for the Jayhawks, handing out to Miller. Pretty close to a first down near the 48-yard line of Baylor. But not a lot of rock chalk Jayhawk tonight as the flag comes down. And the second unit in for Baylor probably from here on out. On both sides of the ball. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike foul, number 19 of the offense. The penalty will be 15 yards from where the play ended, and it will be second down. I'm going to bring it all the way back to the 31 of Kansas. It's against Justin McKay, the transfer from Oklahoma, the wide receiver called for unsportsmanlike. Yeah, you can see him. He's engaged, stock blocking. And at the end of the play, he just throws a right hook. Xavier Howard was on the defensive side of things. Coach Weiss made his feelings known. No uncertain terms. He didn't care for that penalty. Darian Miller again. A few back. Now, Charlie Weiss has been sleeping in his office on a cot. His wife and daughter were living in South Bend, Indiana, so he sleeps on that cot, says, you know, if my wife's not there, why do I want to go home? There's his office off in the corner here at Memorial Stadium. So he stays late at the office and then, in fact, sleeps in it. Get more work done there. That's a guy, I mean, he's committed to turning this program around. And you can see that as, as an accomplished a coach as he's been, that he, he's willing to cede some control. You know, you noted the changing offensively. Coach Blasco and Palace calling the plays. Charlie Weiss built his reputation as a play caller. And a willingness to let that go, I think, is indicative of his commitment to this program. And look, it's whatever it takes. Whatever we got to do to get this thing turned around. And if it's my taking my hands off the wheel a little bit and getting more global in how I coach this team, then so be it. He said he had other NFL opportunities, but he really wanted to take this job at Kansas. He's excited about the opportunity to build a program, turn a program around. He's got some work to do yet, no doubt about it. So after the incompletion, they punt again. And down at the one-yard line. Another good punt for Trevor Pardula, who's been very, very busy tonight. A 58-yard kick. 13-31 to go here. Fourth quarter, 52-7. The number eight team in the country has 650 yards of total offense, and they're not done yet. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. With the game in hand, the Baylor coaches who were up in the box have made their way down to the field. That was uh, during the commercial break. Trailing there, before you see, is Philip Montgomery, the offensive coordinator, and he's talking with some of the players on the field. There were some handshakes already. Wow, that was nearly a safety. And it's no gain for Devin Chafin. And have you ever seen that before? And what do you think of that? Well, I mean, I don't think there's anything to think about it. I mean, look, this game's in hand. It's 52 to 7. I've never seen it before. You know, usually the coaches, they'll stay up there, finish out the ball game. But um, you look at it, these coaches, they can coach from the sideline too. Now you can actually get into a player's ear. 
Seth Russell, the backup quarterback, slings it out to the far sideline intended for Jay Lee. Doesn't hit home, and so it's third and ten. Philip Montgomery, sixth year as the offensive coordinator under Art Bryles, who's already taken his headset off. They go back to Stephenville High School. Working together. It's been a great working relationship. Montgomery and Bryles. Play fake out of the end zone. Russell incomplete. Jay Lee again the intended target. Holloman in on the coverage, so they'll have to punt from their own end zone. That offense, though, for Montgomery has ranked second nationally in yards per game the last two seasons. And we've told you many times here in the first seven, eight weeks of the season that this is a record pace for this Baylor offense leading the nation coming into the night at 7.14 per game. 6.50 tonight. There's still uh, well over 12 minutes to go. Play whistle dead. It's pretty staggering you know, when you think about it and, and how good they've been and how much better they are getting. Delay a game against the offense. Penalties half the distance to the goal. Still fourth down. Half the distance to the goal. It was probably a half yard away from the end zone line. Cut the ball. Turn the ball sideways. Yeah. I guess. Don't get much closer to the end line than that. Doesn't have much room. Got rid of it. And Connor Embry, the son of former Colorado head coach John Embry, on the return. And it's a good one. Puts on the brakes. And goes out of bounds near the 20-yard line. 23-yard return for Embry, who walked onto the Kansas program. Now he's under scholarship. Some fourth-quarter high fives from these optimistic Kansas fans. Even though they're down 52-7 to here in the fourth. Well, good starting field position. And, you know, what you want to see if you're on the Kansas sidelines, you want you to see your team finish the game. Well, Coach Weiss said, we want to win the second half. They did. They didn't win the second half, but they didn't lay down either. So because of that, you, you want to... You want to have something to point to to say, look, this was something positive out of the second half, other than just the touchdown. Art Bryles was upset. He thought that Embry called for a fair catch. That's not how it was ruled on the field, and he returned it to the 20-yard line of Baylor. Best starting field position for the Jayhawks tonight. They might not be done talking this one over. Yeah, well, Coach Browse called a timeout. He wants to discuss it. <laughs> you can see that, you know, he's, he's got his issues. The officials don't even want to come near him over there on that sideline. We were confirming the call on the field, which is correct. This is not a reviewable play, first down. Yeah, not reviewable. <laughs> Let's see if Connor Embry... Yeah, he got right his on. arm up there. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a valid argument by Art Bryles. That right arm went up. Jake Heaps is back in at quarterback. And this is going to be a loss of two yards for the Jayhawks as James Sims is pushed back. Let's take one more look at that punt. See in the bottom right, right behind the goal post. You, see, I, you can barely see it. You know, his right arm, his right arm went up, though. And you can see a lot of those coverage guys, they kind of throttled down until they saw that Embry was going to play it like a live return. Heaps wants to throw. Well, he won't be able to. Jamal Palmer dumps him. A loss of eight on the play. Well, it's been a brutal night for the junior quarterback, Jake Heaps. Jamal Palmer beats the block right at the line of scrimmage. Sims has an opportunity. Palmer really, he had a free run at the quarterback. Looked like he ended up shoving him with his arms rather than leaving with his helmet. Heaps went down in a heap. He stayed down for a while. Second unit in there for Baylor defensively, and that's the first sack for the Bears tonight. 
They lead the Big 12 with three and a half sacks per game. Hey, that's caught. Coleman. Touchdown, Jayhawks. Rodriguez Coleman. Thirty-yard touchdown pass. Heaps to Coleman. We've seen some bright spots from Kansas. They just haven't been able to string it together. It's been kind of a strobe and fade effect, but regardless, bright spot spots nonetheless. So you look at this team, they're given a short field off a punt return that maybe Art Browse is saying should have never happened, but they converted into points. And Wyman with the extra point. So Jake Heaps in the Jayhawks score. Three plays, 20 yards in a minute, 26. Second touchdown for the Jayhawks tonight. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by New Raspberry 5-Hour Energy. Available for a limited time. Get yours now. And in part by Lee, introducing the new Lee Modern Series for men. Bill Self's Kansas Jayhawks basketball team, the favorite to win the Big 12 regular season for the 10th straight year. Ranked number six in the preseason poll. Super freshman Andrew Wiggins is the talk of college basketball. And he hasn't even played a game yet. Already been on the cover of SI. So Baylor's thinking football right now. They are the talk of college football, the Kansas basketball team. Usually this time of year is always the talk of college basketball. In the case again. You get those freshmen on your uh, on your cover early, otherwise they just make the jump to the NBA. That's the way it is in college sports now. You don't have to play to be a superstar. Coleman. Up to the 16-yard line. <laughs> and here comes Russell again. These two coaches, Art Bryles, Charlie Weiss, they have come from two different directions to this point. And it seems right now, Stinch, that they're going in two different directions. Yeah, you know, you, know, you look at these, these two coaches and, and where they came from. We're talking about Art Bryles. He came up from the high school systems. He was a high school coach in Texas. You know, Charlie Weiss, he came down from the NFL. Incomplete. Incomplete. You know, and, and, his pedigree, or at least his, his influences, are like the Mount Rushmore of coaches. You got Bill Belichick, and you got Bill Parcells. And then you've got this, this offensive system that kind of grew up from like almost like a grassroots campaign out of the high school systems in Texas. And he asked who influenced Art Bryles, and you know, he mentioned Bill Yeoman, his, high, his college coach at Houston. Winwood lost it, but out of bounds. Stopped at the 30 by Michael Reynolds. You know, that, and that's where they invented the, the Veer offense, the, the split Veer, the Houston Veer. And he kind of, you know, he drew his inspiration from everywhere, I suppose. He, start, he mentioned to us a, a former English teacher who's now a blues singer as being one of his inspirations. I mean, you, you look at this offense that Baylor runs, and it's starting to turn college football on its head. And it's starting to filter its way up yeah. to the NFL. You look at the, the Philadelphias and the San Franciscos. Kansas may have been offside. Maybe a free play here for Baylor. Jay Lee, the intended receiver, it lands incomplete. Corey Shepard in on the coverage. Offside in the neutral zone at the snap number 97 of the defense five-yard penalty and it is still first down Yeah, it was on Ty McKinney Yeah, Charlie Weiss uh, It seems like he realizes though that there are things that have that are happening now in college football that he Did not experience when he was in the NFL and he, it's kind of like a changing of the guard here He's passing responsibilities on to his assistants hit in the backfield ball loose Kansas says they've got it Devin Chafin fumbled, and yes, Kansas recovers. 
The second Baylor turnover tonight. The Jayhawks having a good field position at the 33-yard line. Baylor, you know, they may have brought their coaches down from the booth, but they want their players to still play on the field. It starts with ball security. That's not even a forced fumble. Chafin's just, I don't know, I really don't know what he's doing, actually. He got his, he's got his, the ball in the pocket. In the zone read, you got to make sure you give your quarterback a clean pocket. It looked like he got the handoff cleanly, and he was just trying to maneuver the football and dropped it. Kiba Agostino on the recovery. Now Darian Miller. The carry barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Second down. Once again, Jamal Palmer from his end position gets a free run into the backfield. That time with a shot on Darian Miller. Number 92 for Baylor. We talked about the depth that Baylor has at receiver. His defense able to develop some depth. Now in year three under Phil Bennett, guys that have been in the system a while. Phil Bennett. Been friends with Bryles for a long time. They actually played against each other in college back in the 70s. As Mundine, the tight end, makes the catch at the 25. It's a gain of seven. Third down for Kansas. The market at the 26. It's so under 10 minutes to go here in Lawrence. Baylor. Going to win this football game, but they know that the schedule intensifies starting next week when they host Oklahoma. Texas Tech lost to Oklahoma tonight. That'll be the opponent in two weeks for the Bears. Complete to Mundell. Still on his feet. To the 16-yard line, first down, Jayhawks. And our Bryles, 5-15 in true road games. And there's a couple of those on the schedule yet, and also that neutral site game against Texas Tech. And you know that the Red Raiders are going to be hungry to start proving people that they're no fluke even though they lost to them you know with their loss though unless something changes in the other major conferences it's Baylor really as the Big 12's lone hope at a national title berth and it's an outside looking in perspective for them now anyway when you look at the way the BC BCS bowls are stacked well, there's a real chance you could have an undefeated team from five of the six AQ conferences right. with Louisville going down that change things, and people are going to be clamoring all the more for a playoff. Yeah, for teams like Ohio State and Baylor, things got to fall just right. The right teams have to lose. As Darian Miller gets another carry, his second straight, this time no gain, as Oakman wraps him up third down. Yeah, when you, you look at what's left for Baylor, and they've got three ranked teams to face, so they've got a stage, they've got opportunities, to beef up their strength of schedule. Can't say the same thing for Ohio State. And so if something does shake up amongst the top two teams, well, there's opportunity for them, for the top three teams even, there's opportunity for Baylor to rise. I think they would leapfrog the Buckeyes. Heaps complete, flags down, Bourbon the catch. He's got the first down. We'll see if this comes back. It's in the backfield where these penalty flags are down. Holding number 77 of the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot remains third down. Goes against the Jayhawks. Ohio State leading big at halftime over Penn State. 19 straight wins for the Buckeyes. But they haven't overpowered any of their Big Ten opponents up to now. Maybe that's going to change here tonight as they're handling Penn State pretty well at the half. You know, Christian Hackenberg at the quarterback positions. Uh, he's enjoyed a pretty good year as a passer. Uh, Penn State really hamstrung by the scholarship restrictions starting to show up, I think, on the field of play. Heaps unloads to the end zone incomplete. One dime. And catch up with it, so it's fourth down, and the field goal unit comes out. Coming into the night, Baylor... One of ten unbeatens, but Texas Tech losing. Loss to Oklahoma. Miami barely won. As Wake Forest gave him a rub today. 
37-yard attempt for Matthew Wyman. And it's no good. Yeah, Matthew Wyman missed an extra point last week. It's been a tough year for the sophomore kicker. A lot of tough things for the Jayhawk football team this year under Charlie Weiss. Chase for the Spring Cup hits the home stretch as Matt Kenser and Jimmy Johnson lead the chase into historic Martinsville Speedway. Only four races left until NASCAR's best driver raises the Spring Cup. Spring Cup Series in Martinsville tomorrow, one on ESPN. This offense of Baylor kind of like a finely tuned NASCAR. Seth Russell, the keeper. And out at about the 28. Eight-yard pickup. Now, Kendall Bryles, the passing game coordinator, seems to be making all the calls from the Baylor sideline here tonight. He's the son of Art. I like those signals. He's got like a... Shock Linwood on the carry. Close to a first down here. Of course, Kendall, two-time Texas 4A player of the year, played for his dad at Stephenville High School as quarterback. And then uh, was a wide receiver at Houston under his dad. Again, he's the passing game coordinator, but I, he normally doesn't call the plays. Well, we've already touched on it. You know, Phil Montgomery, uh, the offensive coordinator for Baylor, he's standing right next to him. He's usually in the booth, he's standing right next to Kendall. They've handed the reins over to him. And there is Kendall, right behind his dad, Art, back some 15 years ago at Stephenville High School. 9,300 yards and 98 total touchdowns his junior and senior years combined in high school. The pass here for Seth Russell comes up empty. Uh, Son showing his old man's bravado here. He'll run a play action on first down deep. See if he can't pick up some big yardage in a chunk. That was intended for Lynx Hawthorne. Running around on the field here in the fourth quarter. We're seeing all kinds of players show up now that aren't on the death chart. That's a great name. It really is. That's second to Shock Linwood. You get a big run, your first name is Shock. That just implies, you know, that to me just implies a big impact. There is Shock with a big impact. Right on cue. Touchdown, Linwood. A 68-yard shocker. This autobiographical name for the Linwood family. I'll name this guy Shock. See if he can't take one to the house. You can see this offense. Hey, you know, th this is what it does. It does it in the first half of games. It does it with the starters. And the mentality doesn't change on the run of the football here. Picking up big gainers. Shock Linwood getting in on the action. Five plays, 80 yards in a minute and nine seconds as Peterson nails the extra point. It's 59 to 14, Baylor. And we still have six minutes and three seconds to play here in Lawrence, Kansas. Shock Linwood with the touchdown run. And Kendall Bryles, the son of Art. He says, yeah, I'll take credit for that. I called that play. Shock Linwood catching his breath after a 68-yard touchdown run. 59-14 Baylor. 742 yards of total offense for Baylor. That's well over... The Bears average of 714, and the most allowed by a Charlie Weiss coach team in college. That's including his time as head coach at Notre Dame. Darian Miller on the return, gets to the 20, and ahead to the 22, a 14-yard return. Just under six minutes to go. Clay Matvick, Matt Stinchcomb, Don Davenport. Here in Lawrence, it's been another impressive night for the Baylor offense. Again, a very balanced stitch. 437 through the air, 305 on the ground. Yeah, that's been a hallmark of, of what they've done. 
and, and that's what makes it so difficult to defend offensively is you really can't afford to pick one or the other because they're just as dangerous. Cozart in there at quarterback. He led Kansas on its first scoring drive. Brandon Bourbon gets the pitch. Second down and five coming up. The schedule for the Jayhawks, they'll be at Texas and Oklahoma State in the coming weeks. Host West Virginia. They'll go to Iowa State, certainly a winnable game for Charlie Weiss, and then, of course, play in-state rival Kansas State at the end of the regular season. Somewhere along the line, they're hoping to end this Big 12 losing streak. Tonight, it's going to go to 25 in a row. That's a nasty slide for Kansas. But you're right, there's some games. You know, West Virginia's 3-5 and five tonight. Yep, they dropped to Kansas game. State. Yep. So there's some opportunities. If they can stay healthy, you can see tonight, obviously with Cozart getting some snaps early in this ball game, the package that they built around him, he demonstrated his ability to throw the football deep, operate the option. You know, it's tough early, of course. You, know, you got Texas and Oklahoma State, but those last three weeks, you know, there's a chance for Kansas to close out this season on a high note, certainly a higher note. I don't see bowl eligibility in their future, but some winnable games on the back end of this year. And he's got the first down, Montel Cozart. And if the Jayhawks don't win a conference game with that remaining schedule we just saw, it will be a winless Big 12 season for the third straight year and the second straight under Charlie Weiss. It's something you know that you got to rankle this fan base, certainly these players. You know these are teams, these are guys, a lot of them they play high school ball with or against. They see them every year during their eligibility. You see it there, the 24 consecutive losses in the Big 12. There's something has to stop that slide. And it may happen this season with those opportunities at West Virginia, Iowa State, and K-State. Cozart in and out of the hands of the receiver, Brandon Bourbon. You know what they need? They need a guy like a Tony Pearson to find a way to either stay healthy. And if it's not Tony Pearson, then somebody else has got to step up for him. Because it can't just be Sims and Cozart, or if it's Heaps in there, they need a threat. You know, a guy that, that's, you know, fast twitch enough to make a defense nervous. Well, a guy that can take it to the house in any moment. You see Pearson there on the sideline. We saw a very abbreviated play from him tonight. He was in on the first two series and then nothing after that. Of course, had that head injury a couple of games ago. Missed the last two games as Miller gets the carry for eight yards. Now third down. Coach Weiss has talked about he's got other he's got other athletes, guys that just can't play this year. You see T.J. Millweir, quarterback out of UCLA. And Nick Harwell has already made the transfer from Miami, Ohio. He lit up Ohio State a couple of years ago. I remember seeing him as a freshman. He's a talented player at the receiver position. Meanwhile, Baylor has all hands on deck and reinforcements coming in the way of recruits as Kozart dives ahead across the 45 for a first down with three and a half to go. The future is right now for this Baylor program, but it's also bright. Art Bryles is doing a great job on the recruiting trail, too. Yeah, he's recruiting guys. We talked about the facilities improvement. You know, they're a, a Nike school that they got different uniforms every other week, which is a big deal to the recruits. It's hard to even know which team you're pulling for. You look out there, oh, thank goodness the B's on the helmet. Otherwise, <laughs> chrome helmets. There. Yeah, metallic gold. Oh, Miller dropped for a loss. I tell you, I mean, I'll be interested to see if anybody comes calling for our brows. You know that they will, and there are some jobs you think about the Southern cows of this world, you think about, you know, we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen at another another state school there in the state of Texas. Yeah, what, what, what is the status, in your opinion, uh, for Mac Brown? Is his, is his seat still real hot, or is it cooled off quite a bit? Well, I, I, well the Oklahoma win, of course, helped a great deal. Um, and at the same time, we could keep in mind that Baylor's going to play Texas at the end of this season. And if that's for a de facto Big 12 championship, Deep shot, 
incomplete intended for Matthews. You know, you wonder what is the fallout? If, if in fact, Texas has an opportunity at that point to contend for the Big 12 championship and they lose to Baylor in that instance, you know, just the point being is that Art Bryles has done a lot at Baylor since 2008. But at what point do you say, I've done as much as I can do here, and you move on somewhere else? And he might not want to. He might say, look, I've been the wizard of Waco. I've done all <laughs> that I can do, and I like it here. These guys appreciate what we're doing. Well, we know this. He has remained in Texas his entire coaching career, which started back in 1979. That's including high school. He stopped at Texas Tech in the backfield as a coach. It's going to be a first down catch for Parmalee. And then his time at Houston as the head coach, and now in Waco with the Baylor Bears. I, I doubt he wants to leave the state of Texas. Texas born and bred, and he's had success as a coach in that state. Now, well, why would you want to leave with all the talent that is in state? You look at Texas, one of the most fertile recruiting grounds you can find in this country. Think about Georgia, Florida, California, Louisiana, and Texas. Not in that order, necessarily. Miller's going to get three here as the clock is well under two minutes now. Minute 45 to go. But this offense is a great equalizer, and if it is, and it can take talent that's maybe not on par with their opposition and still win games, what can an offense like this do when you've got superior talent? What happens then? To me, I think there's a chance that it starts looking like some of the Nebraska teams that we saw in the 90s, where you look at you know, guys like Lawrence Phillips and Eric Crouch and Scott Frost and Tommy Frazier, you're running an offense, an option offense, it's hard to stop. This offense isn't that much different, Clay. Well, it's pretty impressive. 742 yards of total offense. They had over 500 at halftime. So the last 250 or so, Really, with the second string unit in there, they were able to take their foot off the gas. Another huge night. So that total yard average is going to go up again this week. Came in averaging 714, and they're going to win a program record 11th straight game here tonight. This is the first time out called time out, in the Kansas. second half by Kansas. This time out shall be for 30 seconds only. We were talking Baylor recruiting and how the future is now, and yet still so bright because of the recruiting trail that Art Bryles is showing up on and winning some great battles. For more on that, let's go to ESPN Director of National Recruiting, Tom Luganville. Outside of the Oregon Ducks, there may not be any team in college football that has a bigger cool factor than the Baylor Bears right now. Out of the Big 12, 23 verbal commitments, three of them in the ESPN 300. And it's not just about the high-profile guy. It's about the under-the-radar guy, too. And Art Bryles has done a great job of that. Davion Hall, the athlete, he's the guy to look to. Baylor's suddenly becoming wide receiver U. But Davion Hall could also play on defense as a safety. Keep an eye on Hall for the Bears in coming years. All right, Lugs, thank you. Third and seven, Cozart will take a shot at the end zone. That's incomplete, fourth down. And the offensive lineman drafted for Baylor since 2009. And see Jason Smith, first rounder that went to the Rams. Watkins, first rounder to the Eagles. Some other high rounders in there, too. You see a guy there, Cyril Richardson. He might be the next one. And what's amazing about that, and you think about how well Baylor has, has started to recruit, and yet they still share a state with the Texas Longhorns. If you look at these numbers, and then you realize that Texas has not had an offensive lineman drafted anywhere since 2008. They haven't had a first rounder since 02. That's, that's pretty remarkable. False start, number 77 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, and it is still fourth down. Baylor's also had some pretty good wide receivers drafted in recent years, and they've got a great duo right now in Reese and Goodley. And you look at the ones coming out of there. Arkansas a couple of years ago, Joe Adams, Greg Childs, Jarius Wright. Well, Baylor's starting to churn them out as well. 
and unsurprisingly so yeah, given the aggressive nature of this offense. It's been said many times as Allen goes out of bounds with a minute and two seconds left. And they'll turn it over on downs. Ball spotted at the 44-yard line. That Baylor right now has the cool factor. You talked about the uniforms. We've talked about the flashy offense. But it is much deeper than the superficial things. There, there, there is a program that has a foundation now, thanks to Art Bryles. And that's really why the future is so bright. Yeah, it's the identity. I mean, look, you can have great uniforms all day long. If you're losing games, nobody wants to look good and get drug all over the football field. That's not what's happening with Baylor. Baylor are lighting up scoreboards, and they're getting wins, and they're getting to bowl games, and they're winning those, too. The most thorough college football show on television, BCS Countdown, presented by Discover Card, Sunday at 8.30 on ESPN. And an encore presentation at 9 on ESPNU. And we'll see if Baylor can eke up UCS standings. Out. An awfully difficult. Teams in front of them winning. Alabama, Florida State, no problem. Oregon. Was winning going into the fourth quarter tonight. Ohio State taking care of business. Second 7 and 0 start in program history. 11th consecutive win. That is a new school record for the Baylor Bears. Art Bryles and company get it done tonight easily. 59 14 over the Jayhawks of Charlie Weiss. Coming up next, it's Sports Center U. Wrap up the day in college football and look ahead to Alabama State and Alabama AM. 59-14. Now we go to the studio and Matt. Thank you, Clay. 59 to 14, your final. Baylor just makes it look easy as they have every week. 743 yards of offense, 59 points, only allowing 14 on the night. Coming up, Isaiah Crowell. Alabama State. The big game taken on Alabama A&M. That is coming your way momentarily right here. Some swaction for you here on ESPNU. So Baylor does what they do, roll up the points. Their defense, very impressive as well. What's your biggest takeaway from this one in Lawrence? I mean, honestly, not much. I would, see, I would steal a line from Dennis Green and say they are who we thought they were. I mean, they, they just continue to go out there, roll points up, dominate the opponent offensively. And I think what's more impressive right now is defensively. I know it was Kansas, so we don't expect a lot. But that's how they played all season. And you can't fault a team. You may not, you may not uh, bump them up or rank them high, and that's kind of where they are now, but you can't fault them for beating who's on their schedule. Yeah, I agree with you. And I also think the other thing we have to look at with Baylor is getting players in and developing those players. And the thing that they've been able to do is really get some guys that know the system, work the system, and make plays for them. And that's all you can ask for. If you have to make plays against those teams that you play and win games. This is a program that has turned into plug and play.